morning and welcome to Sabina Park for the seventh round action between Trinidad and the Scorpions. The toss will be spawned by Pete Salmon, match referee Donovan Haynes, and of course Josh De Silva of Trinidad and Tobago. So Pete, someone won the toss, decided he's going to have a bowl. And any particular reason why? Uh, well, uh, we played three seamers and uh, we did it like it was a bit of two. So our plan is to just use up the mice in the weekend. First time captain in the Scorpion. What is the expectation of you, Pete, someone? Um, nothing new. Just to go out there, lead the guys and play a hard game. Hard game and cricket. Hopefully come out victorious. All right, Pete, someone. All the best. Thank you. Oh, Josh, you lost the toss. What would you do if you won the toss? We would have had a ball. Why? Um, I a bit of moisture in it, but unfortunately we lost the toss, so we had to go out and put our best foot forward with the bat. Uh, you scored over 500 runs in the last game. What is your chances in this game at Sabina Park? Yeah, it's a different wicket, a different venue, so we're just looking to capitalize on what we can. Um, take a look at the conditions early on and hopefully make use of it. Any change to the last game? Yeah, we have a couple. We have um, Shannon Gabriel, who's out, and Vikash Mohan, who is out. Um, Tifa Cooper comes in and having Daisy makes a debut. All right, all the best, Josh. All right, news from the middle. The Scorpions, they won the toss, and they have chosen to bowl. And that's the news from the middle. Thank you very much, Marlon Pinnock, for going through that toss with us. Andrew Chan in your company. And uh, while, they're, while the conditions are lovely for cricket this morning, Penny, there is some rain behind us to the northern end of the Jamaica Scorpions. Well, not rain, I should say, but some uh, dark clouds. And we have a close-up on the pitch here. Your thoughts on the pitch, Penny, and how it will play, and uh, Jamaica's decision to bat, to bowl, I should say. Well... Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to you, Mr. Andrew Chung. The Sabina Park wickets always having moisture. The moisture, 20 to 25 minutes on the moisture is gone. I think Pete, someone captain in the Scorpions for the very first time. This is a good opportunity for him as well. And of course, there's three debut on in the Scorpion lineup as well. Uh, young Andre McCart, St. Elizabeth, Beckford, Youngster who was dominant in the JCA two-day competition. And of course, Andre Dennis, the man from Clarendon. Hills from Clarendon, please, for the Jamaica Defence Force team. All debutants in the Scorpion lineup for the seventh round action from Sabina Park. Yeah, taking a look at the Trinidad and Tobago lineup, we have Josh De Silva, Amir Jangu, Keon Otley, Jason Mohammed, Terence Hines, Jid Gooley, Brian Charles, Anderson Phillip, Carrie Pierre, Navin Bedesi, and Safer Scooper. It will be Keon Otley, and uh, Safer Scooper will start proceedings. And it looks like that man, OJ Shields, will be opening the bowling for Jamaica. Uh, starting to hit some good form, OJ Shields. And with the slightly overcast conditions behind us, it's not as hot and bright as it usually is. Maybe Jamaica can uh, make use of those conditions. Here's Shields with the first delivery. Good lifting delivery. Well played by Otley. Yes, sir. Three step a gully waiting as well. Perfect opportunity for OJ Shields to make a mark here early on day one of the seventh round action. Overcast skies here at Sabina Park. Fast bowlers should be happy with this. Over cast guys here, Andrew. Yep. And he has an attacking field. Three slips a gully. Field at backward point. Mid off is uh, conventional. Mid on is fairly close in. Got a fine leg as well. And that field at mid wicket. A little bit too wide there. Extravagant leave by Otley. Realize so far not getting any good carry through to wicket keeper Morris, but it's good to see Morris back in the team as well. Last game he had an injury. Yeah, but no Duval Green for you. Well, no Marquina Minley for you as well. No, indeed. 
to all the debutants in the team today. Andrew Dennis and Andrew McCarthy, both fast bowlers as well. Perfect opportunity for them to express themselves at the regional level. This is a wide delivery. And signal while immediately by umpire from Trinidad and Tobago. Where deliver this time on the path of OJ Shields. Yeah, so, so the Jamaica team is a, is a, is a much, cha well, a, a much changed, I would say. I mean, the core is still there. Pete Salmon, Romain Morris, Abby J. Mansing. J. Vaughan Buchanan gets another chance after his debut in the last game. As you mentioned, Dennis and McCarthy are the two debutants. Um, but there's no Brandon King either. No Dilbert Green is there. Uh, so really just shuffling the pack a little bit at this last game of the season. And I think they're sixth in the table, Jamaica Scorpions. So um, really not much left in this last round. But of course, the Scorpions have to play for pride, <laughs> even though they're not playing the pride. <laughs> what, what is good of the Scorpions is that they are giving person's opportunity it's good to see young McCarthy he was in and around the team since the third round and now getting the opportunity at the seventh round and then it's in and around the Jamaica training session Getting some inward movement, the OJ Shields. I wouldn't say a glorious day for cricket, Andrew. Just yeah, a normal day here at, at Sabina Park. Yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's the only thing that it's, that's unfortunate is that, of course, Shunan and Tobago uh, versus Jamaica is a big game, and it's, a, it's lovely to be at Sabina, but it's Unfortunately, that's the last game of the, the season in terms of the rounds. In, uh, in terms of the round seven of the Cricket West Indies Championship. First runs off the bat, it is indeed a nice flick and the throw comes in. Bit of a streaky single, safe as Cooper, maybe a little bit slow getting off the mark. But Trinidad and Tobago are off the mark. Now it's the second runs actually, but the first runs off the bat. OJ Shields is guilty and strain on the line of the leg stump to Otley. Otley get his first run off the contest. Brings Cooper in strike. Haven't faced a delivery so far is Cooper. So you mentioned two fast bowlers making their debut. Who do you think will get the, uh, the toss of the new ball? Will it be Dennis or McCarthy? I say... I'm going to say McCarthy. You s and who and, uh, do you think? Who do you pick? Who Dennis. You pick Dennis. Okay, so let's make a bet, Penny. Yeah. Whoever wins has to buy the other lunch. He says Dennis, but that's, uh, of course, a soldier background. End of the first over, two without loss. So he's obviously going to back his fellow military man. And uh, I say McCarthy just because I have to. <laughs> Indeed, and it's going to be Andre Dennis from the Michael Lowland end of the ground. So, of course, I'm going to get lunch from Andre Chung today as well. So what rank is he? Supper Dennis. Supper. Supper in the army. But what rank is he? Equivalent to a private in the army. Oh. Yes, indeed. Private Dennis. And where does he hail from? Clarendon. Mm. Country boy? Indeed. Lovely. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad to see that uh, Jamaica flexing their, their, fast, uh, their fast pacing, their fast bowling uh, riches. Physique wise, I'm, I'm very impressed with Dennis because, of course, it's the first time I'm seeing him up close. He's very tall, he's very slim. And he's heels he looks like he has long arms. Well, of course, with all he does. saluting in the army. <laughs> he is from the parish of Clarendon, the district of Chedlight District. Mm. Mm. 
I also went to Chedlai Primary School as well. Then he went to Garvey Masia High School. Played for Saint for Clarendon for a few years, bowling off spin and opening the batting as well. And now he's bowling for the Scorpion, pulling the new ball. First delivery from Dennis. Oh well. <laughs> A white signal immediately uh, by umpire. Like normally, normally army, right. men, normally army men are known for their mark, for starting on the mark. But uh, just a little bit too much of a gap there, but uh, that's okay. Loosener from Andre Dennis. And the good thing is it can only go uphill from here because you made your debut. Your first ball isn't on point. But Good delivery. And that's where you want to start, Andre Dennis, just about that food stop area. And I'm gonna ask our our good hardworking cameraman and Dylan Sharma to get a close up of, of Dennis's action so you can have a look at it. From what I've seen, he gets that that, uh, that forward foot, that left foot very high in the air. It's almost like a military kick. <laughs> um, but it's a good unfurling because he's a tall fellow. And he crouches as he comes as he comes in, so he's running in hard. You can see the arms working there. Yeah, that really high front foot. Yeah, so let's have a look at it here. You can see he's crouching there as he comes in. And as he unfolds, get that uh, at that front foot high in the air. Well, Andre Dennis, born the 5th of February, 1994 as well. Mm. Still think he has a little bit of a stutter as he comes into the crease there, Penny. Doesn't, doesn't flow as nicely. Maybe he's just a little bit of nose. See there, he's running quite nicely. And right about there, he just sort of missteps. I don't know if, it's, if that's what you want to call it. <coughs> Got 15 wickets so far in the JCA competition from six games. Not bad. He's tightened up since that uh, first wayward delivery. Good to see captain of the Scorpions for the first game in his career as well. Beat someone giving some advice to Andre Dennis, the man from Chedlight District in Clarendon, getting his opportunity at the regional level and would want to make a mark here at Sabina Park. Apart from that first delivery, which was a wide. So far, look good. Is Andre Dennis. Good to see Javoy Royal back in the setup as well. He was left out the last game. And he went to play that semi finals against Kingston in the Jamaica Cricket Association two day competition. He still lost to Kingston. He picked up a five wicket all as well. That completes over number two with the red force three without loss. Yeah, not a bad over there from him. See, the eight starts so far by the two teams. Bleak skies here at Sabina Park as well. Just joining us, the Scorpions, they won the toss and asked the Red Force to take first strike. This, the seventh round action from Sabina Park. And this is the last round of the West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. And of course, four teams, very close to top four teams, Andrew. 
any one of those teams in the top four could win this title for 2024. It's all boiled down to the last game. That's round seven to decide the winner of this year's regional championship winners. There's three step and a goalie for J Shields. 16 first class wicket to his name so far. Good delivery. But poor on the path of wicket keeper Morris. And that should be four buys. Not what you'd want as a wicket keeper to your name. Yeah, he, he got in an awkward position here, Morris. And just sloppy. Kept a little low, yeah. Very sloppy there on the path of Morris. <laughs> Of course, it was a sort of calf or thigh injury, so maybe it's a little, like, may not be 100%, maybe it's at a 95, 96%, and that's uh, just going a little bit low, maybe just a little bit of stiffness. Nice flick. And safer scooper will get off the mark. And we have thick inside edge. You'd have liked it, but yeah, he was rehearsing trying to pull that through mid wicket, but uh, yeah, a little bit too straight on him. I think he hit the inner portion of the bat as well. He was looking to hit the ball, shoo me down. And he went down to a long work region with the debit on Andre Dennis. Did the tidy up as you can see here at Sabina Park. Bleaky skies. Excellent work by our cameraman Katir Mohammed as well. Another one down the leg side. Half stifle appeal, and they'll run a leg by for that one. Having some trouble adjusting to the right hand, left hand combination here, uh, which is always difficult, I think, for a bowler. But we'll see if maybe Dennis has a chance to bowl against Safer Scooper. That would make him feel a little more comfortable. He might be a little bit more uh, happy to bowl to the right handers. We'll see how that goes. Where's OJ? She's still off. Two deliveries remain in his second over. As I mentioned, a Scorpion six in this year's regional competition. And of course, Trinidad. Lovely shot by Cooper. Will it have the wings to get to the boundary? Yes, it does. Tremendous timing. It also pitched delivered here by OJ Shields. And it caught the treatment it deserved. Full face of the bat being presented. Yeah. Tremendous timing, Andrew. Yeah, he posed for the cameraman, Kadir Mohammed, as he hit that square. Absolutely lovely. And we all know whatever happens at Sabina Park, the outfield will be as fast. Lightning as, fast outfield here at Sabina Park. Andre Dennis, <laughs> OJ Shields, and Andre McCarthy combined. <laughs> Very probably fast. With a, probably with a little Anderson Phillip thrown in as well. Anderson Phillips having a good season so far this year in the West, West Indies Regional Championship as well. And that completes over number three at 13 without loss. Dennis getting ready to bowl his second over. He'll be bowling to Otley. Just the one from 10 deliveries so far. Been on the quieter side of things. Been very watchful so far. He'll want to finish the tournament on a high is Otley. Otley had a wonderful season last year as well.
Utley, born the 9th of December 1989, age of 34. A better line there from Dennis. Twenty first class game. Eight hundred and ninety three runs at an average of twenty two point nine. Will you want to step up on that average as well, Andrew? For oh no, I think that average is below par. time Dennis Adler down the leg side will take by the wicket keeper Morris but if you look at the field for the Scorpions this morning it's a very attacking field three slip and a gully there's a backward point there's no cover and if you look at the field it shows that Captain Pete someone is asking Dennis <coughs> to just bowl outside that full stone era forcing Athlete to drive, those slip will come into play. Has yeah. to be careful not to over pitch here, Dennis, as that gap is a very big gap. I'd like to say a pleasant good morning to that gentleman whose voice you will hear in about 30 minutes' time, and that's other, that's none other than uh, Jerome Foster. I hear they have a nickname for him in Jamaica. It's called Party Boy. <laughs> As everywhere there's a party, there is Jerome Foster, front and center. With lifting delivery. He needs to make Otley play a little bit more, but I, I, I like how he's settling down. With lifting delivery, of course, he's a tall fellow. He has those long arms. Long levers as well, broad shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> As a man from Chet Light District in Clarendon. It's good to see that he's using the full extension of his arm as well. <laughs> I tell you what, he scored an half century in the last game as well. Batting at number six as the all-rounder. <laughs> Good delivery to complete over number four. It's a maiden at 13 without loss. He should feel very confident with that. And we'll have to have a word with our scorers there, Penny, because they have his name as Andrea Dennis, and it's definitely Andre Dennis. That's the comments I'm getting as well from yeah. the Jamaica Defence Force players texting on my phone as if I'm the one who select the team or write his name in the 11. Yeah. Special good morning to all the Cricket West Indies officials and other employees are on of course the scorers and then uh, our good match referee Donovan Hills and he continues to do an excellent job in this mm. year's regional championship he's a classy gentleman <laughs> indeed someone we can learn from as well he gave me some advice this morning as well so it's all learning process for me as well in this year's regional championship for 2024. And also this is a learning process for Andre Dennis making his debut for the Scorpions. At home at Sabina Park. Excellent place to make your debut. Realize OJ Shields getting the ball to swing away from the right handed Cooper. I think he just needs to be a bit closer, forcing him to play. And those three slip and a goalie will come into play. OJ Shields not at his best so far this game. Not a lot of pace in this wicket as well at Spina Park for this 70 round action, the final game. West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. It's 
still too wide. I'm gonna ask our cameraman, could you moment to see if we can get some a shot of the clouds over the uh, the that would be the western side of the ground. It's uh, very high in the sky, but just to the western side of the ground, it's almost like a yin and yang penny. And it seems that they're sort of stretching over to the middle ground as well. Four point three overs bold, settled start for Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Ooh, gets a thick outside edge there, almost squared up by that good feeling in the gully there. That's uh, by Carlos Brown diving away to his right. Young Cooper made his list A debut for the West Indies B back in 2018 and 2019 at the Super 50 tournament. Played under 17 and West Indies on the 19. That's a good delivery to follow up and well played. Looks solid, safer scooper. Young fellow come up and coming. Keon Ockley has been around for some time. Well, this is his sixth first class game. 115 runs at an average of 13.8 strike rate of 35.4 you want to step up that average young Cooper let's have a look at the what's going on in matches across uh, round seven nice drive pleasant strode nicely to that one is safe as Cooper will he get the purchase on it no he doesn't Salmon does the work coming in. Are they pushing for three? They do get three. And that's good running from Trinidad and Tobago. That's uh, Red forcing the issue. With a good three runs and the over. Cooper pinches the strike. Five overs gone. 16 without loss. Excellent running between the wickets. By the Trinidad and Tobago. Red force batters in the middle. Immediately after coming on the front foot. Stroke that ball through the covers. You could hear the urgency. You could see the urgency, I should say. That's Derval Green and Marquino Minley both having a chat on the sideline. They are out today. Andre McCarthy and Andre Dennis making their debut for them. And also Andre McCarthy, Derval Green and Marquino Minley all of the St. Elizabeth Technical High School as well. Jay Dennis is from Gauvy, Monsieur. Age of 30 is Andre Dennis. Making his debut at 30 as well as Javon Buchanan last game made his debut at 30. Late rumors we'll call him, Andrew. Mm. <laughs> Better to be late than never though. Yeah, so let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the games around the region. Over at Coolidge, the West Indies Academy actually have the Barbados Pride in a spot above it, 18 for 2. Johan Lane getting rid of Captain Craig Bradford cheaply. Leeward Islands Hurricanes versus the Windward Islands Volcanoes. That is a top of the table clash, and that is going on at the Queen's Park Oval Penny. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes are 56 for 3. See if I can pull up the scorecard on you. Mikai Louie not out on 16. Ryan John has two wickets. Uh, Jamar Hamilton, your wicketkeeper's union player, will be in. John got uh, Greaves for a duck and uh, Kesey Carty for a duck as well. My, my. So interesting stuff going on there. And then the combined campuses and colleges are 50 for 3. They're playing the Guyana Harpy Eagles over in St. Augustine. Um, Niall Smith has 2. Thorne has 1. 
On the leg side, a little bit of slate swing there for Andrew Dennis. Roman Morris takes it well and tumbles quite nicely. But if you look at the point standing in this year's West Indies Regional Championship, Andrew tells it all. Winwood Island up top, 87.6 points. And of course, in second is the Pride, 83.4. Leroy in third, 83.2. And of course, the Kayana Harvey Eagles, 82.8. So it's pretty close between the top four. I tell you what, this last round fixtures, Andrew, will decide the winner of this year's regional championship for 2024 well it's very very interesting because looking at that i mean if if the leewards can pull off a win i mean either way the barbados i'm not sure how the barbados barbados pride are going to finish up it might be heartbreak for them because if they if the winners pull off a win then they're on they, they're gonna they're gonna win the the, the tournament but if you look at Guyana Harpy Eagles will be playing CCC and they are at the bottom of the table as well. Yes, if Guyana post up a very strong team, I think it might it might depend on bonus points, Penny. That's a lovely cut. And he's got that over that slip quarter and just wide. And he's hit that ferociously safer scooper. He had some uh, width to work with and dealt with it quite nicely. Well, I wouldn't say the most convincing shot at all. Just the top edge and it flew over that third one. Bonji. Important runs for Cooper as well. Yep. Moves into double figures with that shot. And uh, that's the first time Andre Dennis has conceded a four in his first class career. Well, before it was 2.4 overs for a run. Yeah. And now 2.5 for five. That was Bonji spoil his figure. I wouldn't say spoil, put a little damp on his figures. Yeah, it hasn't been bad exchanges by the opening uh, bowlers for Jamaica. I just think they haven't asked enough questions in terms of plays and misses and things like that. That's a better delivery. That's uh, angling in there. And well played by Cephas Cooper. Covers it quite nice. He looks like he has a solid defense. 20 without loss. Yes, it's good to see Andre Dennis getting the opportunity as well. <laughs> So the debutant, Andre McCarthy, will be coming from this, the Courtney Walsh end. And this is the commentary box end as well. If you're familiar with Spina Park, it's the north end of the ground. Please for the St. Elizabeth cricket team. Went to St. Elizabeth Technical High School as well. Played under 19. He's a bit shorter than uh, O.J. Shields and uh, and Dennis. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Well, he best of luck is to the young man, of course. Isn't there another Jamaican player named Andrew McCarthy as well? Yes, of course, Andrew McCarthy. He went to home with technical, but of course, he played. For the Scorpions for a number of years, he was the batter. Mm. Played CPL as well. Indeed. That's a lovely little flick there. Got a little bit of in-swing there from uh, McCarthy on that delivery. He has something to work yeah, with. Yeah, McCarthy tends to swing the ball into the left-handers. Okay. And get it away from the right-handers. Well, is he a right-handed Chris Marsantuki? Would, I, would you go that far <laughs> or not that far yet? Not that is far. A, I think he's a Kishmar little... Santuki is very special to me. Yeah. Very skillful as well. He and looks a little bit faster than Santuki. He is indeed. <laughs> That's a smidge. And of course, he can generate paces, Andre McCarthy. When he gets warm, he tends to generate serious pace. Oh. 
Ooh. Swing there. That's a lovely That's delivery. exactly what I'm talking about. Entitled. Get the ball to Sheba yeah. away from the right hand. And that was a perfect example yeah. of what I'm talking about. Good delivery by McCarthy. Pitch and oh, lovely. You beautiful. Absolutely good stuff there. And not much peace. And a, very, and a lovely tempter as well. Because Safer Scooper was absolutely drawn into that. He, he was like into it. it. <laughs> yeah. He's like a... Seemed to be a batter who loves to drive. He's like pin eater food. His heart couldn't turn away, couldn't stay away. Oh, almost He's like Andrew there. Chung to Cory Goat. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Like Jerome Foster to a party. <laughs> Indeed. See on the replay here, shaping away this time around. Excellent start here on debut by Andre McCarthy. And this force a change to the field by Captain Pete Summon. So look, if you look at the field, Andrew, there's acres of space on the onside. There's a mid on and there's a man at long, long leg. Everybody else is on the offside. Excellent start here by McCarthy on debut. If you're just joining us, this is round seven action in this West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. The host is Scorpion Spain against the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Three debutants in the Scorpions lineup today. A man with ball in hand, Andre McCarthy, Andre Dennis, and of course. Justin Beckford. Not much carry through to wicket keeper Morris. But so far, Andre McCarthy on the money. It in good areas. So far, a bleaky morning here at Sabina Park. No sunshine whatsoever. And lots of seats in the stands as well. Not much spectators. Good delivery to close out over number seven at 21 without loss. And thank you very much for that lovely stand there from Marlon Pinnock. He will now vacate the premises for a short while. While Jerome Party Boy Foster shakes off the glitter. And slowly makes his way down the stairs. Solid start by the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. I don't think they could have asked for any more. Not sure if the Jamaican opening bowlers use the conditions as well as they would like as Jerome Foster settles in. Good morning, Mr. Foster. And Good how morning. How are you today? I'm great. Good day for cricket as well. As much as it's overcast, it's not threatening with rain. Down the leg side from Dennis. Stifled appeal from the bowler. Your thoughts on the. Uh, and yeah. your thoughts? Uh, your thoughts on the uh, on the Jamaica Scorpions outfit today? No surprises really. Um, I expected Justin Beckford to make his debut. I expected. Andre McCarthy to make his debut. He has been on and around the periphery for this season. He has been in the 13 twice. So you expected him at this stage to get a crack, given that Marquino Minley and Derval Green are out. Um, yeah, Jevo Royal makes a return, but he made his debut against Trinidad last year, and he did well in that game with the ball in hand. So I guess it's probably a horses for courses type of selection that and that you would probably leave out a Ramal Lewis who is an off spinner for Royal who will bowl to a predominantly right-handed middle order of the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Jason Mohammed. Um, Jid is a left-hander as well. Well, Gouli is left-hander, left yeah, but Joshua, Joshua the Silva, etc. They are right-handers. Terence Hines. Ooh, good delivery, swinging in. The question is asked, probably swinging too much. The umpire signals leg side. Unfortunate for the military man, that could have been his first wicket in first class cricket. Yeah, wide of the crease. I think that one was sliding down. Hit him on the back pad. Tends to struggle with the deliveries that are on the stumps. Utley, 
because he tends to play around the ball. And you saw that in Australia. So that's probably where Dennis has to concentrate. He hasn't been bad, Dennis. Yeah, just haven't asked him any questions. That's the problem. Precisely. They've yeah. been solid, if, but not spectacular. Yeah. And I like the length that McCarthy yeah. has bowled so far as well. Much better than Shields. Another trying too hard with this one. Will this one run fine enough? Excellent diving effort there by that number 63. That's McCarthy. But unfortunately, couldn't get a hand to that. And that will run away for four buys, unfortunately. Yeah. Trying for that big. He came off the boot, actually. But you can see that uh, if you look at the replay in there, uh, what you mentioned, Otley, he is falling over. You can see that head really yeah. tipping over there. Let's have a look at the replay again, Dylan. Leaning back in his chair, our producer, Dylan Sharma. Yeah, really, yeah. really leaning over there. Back live, and that's back of a length, and that's coming in. And Andre Dennis is finding his radar, unfortunately, in his fourth over. And what, what, you, what you realize as well with the Scorpions is that they haven't bowled over the wicket to Utley as yet. So it's probably something that they have realized that they need to be on the stumps. Ask him questions outside that off stump. He's very strong square either side, especially to the shorter deliveries. You want to have him forward as much as possible. That's hit nicely, though. That's stand and deliver stuff. That's four. That's cracked through the extra cover region. Yeah, over pitch delivery. Asking for trouble there. And this uh, surface or pitch, the square that they're using, is the furthest one from the mound area or from South Camp Road. So it's closer to the Kingston Creek Club. So that shot to extra cover is actually the longest boundary or the longer boundary the longer square boundary so that that tells you how well he timed it as well because yeah. it raced into the boundary 29 without loss after eight overs yeah that'll be the southeastern corner of the ground and it's a very different pitch we've seen here it's uh, not covered with a lot of grass at all mm. dry bones pitch here Sabina park McCarthy will get his second over now, and it's been a good first over from him. Seems to have a little bit of swing about him. Yeah, swing again. Beautiful stuff there from McCarthy. It's good to see a swing bowler from the from the West Indies. <laughs> yeah, as I said, like the length that he's bowling. It is going to ask questions, and if he continues on that line, which is just on and about fourth and fifth stumps, it can cause problems. You, your opener should be leaving alone those deliveries. Yeah. But because of how full the delivery is, the batters are normally tempted to play, to play at that delivery, and especially with the lack of footwork from Cooper just now, he just threw his hands at the ball, yeah. which is very dangerous for somebody who is batting early in the order. Interestingly, there actually is a cover position in place for McCarthy, just a little bit of security, and it's the captain himself, it's Salmon. Yeah. Like, this, like this field as well, three slips, the goalie, and as you mentioned, the, the cover is there, just in case he over pitches. Yeah. He's not really... Yeah, he's not super express. Yeah, he's not the quickest, so you still want to ensure that you give him that protection and give him that margin of error just in case he errs. I do want to see if he can bring it, in, uh, bring it back into the right hand, of course, which is, should be a good arrow in his quiver. Well played this time, my Cooper. I, I mean, obviously, the right-handed to the right-handed batsman will get that natural swing. He's, he has it a little bit exaggerated, and obviously, he'll be able to, to bowl it straight, as we've seen yeah. with a couple of deliveries. Okay. 
I'd also like to see a Yoko length delivery from him just to see if he gets that late swing as well. So almost getting that on that Yoko length, but uh, not bad from McCarthy. Yeah, when he was when he was selected for the first thirteen man squad, the coach said that he's probably the hardest worker throughout the preparation phase. McCarthy, who is from St. Elizabeth, went to St. Elizabeth Technical High School, which has produced so many quality cricketers in Jamaica. Also played youth cricket for Jamaica, and he's from Junction, St. Elizabeth. I don't know if you've ever been to Junction. You've been here long enough. You probably have. Yeah, no, no, I haven't reached that far yet. Yeah. And for those who are from St. Elizabeth, or who knows St. Elizabeth, he's from what I was told, a community called Shadok Hill. I've never been there, but I've been to Junction. But I've that part of St. Elizabeth produces probably the most amount of cricketers. Yeah, they play cricket for the whole year in southern St. Elizabeth. Is that where Jerome Taylor is from? No, he's from north, north east St. But Elizabeth. But it's still St. Elizabeth? Yes, yeah, still St. Elizabeth. Well, that's what I asked, Fuzzy. <laughs> you said that part. <laughs> oh, beaten there. Gets the edge. And that's the wicket for McCarthy. Safer scoop of flashes at that one. But the swing bowler strikes. And that's his first first class wicket. End of Safer Scooper. Probably he should have gotten the new ball because he's doing what the new ball is supposed to do. Have it moving around. Pitch it up. Late movement. Enterprising. Enter ent enticing the outside edge asking questions and the answer is the edge of Cephas Scooper is taken and Romain Morris has another catch at the wicket Andre McCarthy gets his first first class wicket and but based on what we have seen so far he really and truly deserves it the, look at the replay here close to the wicket just on and about that fourth and fifth stump yeah. could have easily left that alone Cooper you could have seen what McCarthy was trying to do all day should be leaving that alone as an opener, but guess what? The Scorpions, they strike. And the first casualty is Cephas Scooper, 29 for 1. A couple of good drives, but he's back in the pavilion. And the man who has been in decent touch this season, Jared Gooley. I mean, you, the thing is, you understand, I sort of understand why Cooper played at it, but if you know that so far you haven't seen his ability to bring it back in and you can trust that that one is going away so i understand your point i mean i think it was a beautiful delivery that he he sort of had to play at mm -hmm. if he had to drive if he had to go a full-blooded drive at it is the, is the other question it's a good question yeah, yeah. And unfortunately for Safer's Cooper, he hadn't learned because he saw that McCarthy is uh, swinging the ball away. He saw that this swing that he's getting is extravagant. So he really should have picked, picked up on that. One for one after two overs for him. 29 for one. Should Nantabigo Tobago Red Force lose their first wicket? Jid Gooley is out in the middle there. There's two left-handers. Well, Andre Dennis is finding his radar against Keon Utley. And it's really bowling full as possible. He's trying to sneak under that bat. I said he, as you'll take a look there at McCarthy, not the Andre McCarthy that bowls off spin and who has played years of <laughs> yeah. list A and white ball cricket for Jamaica. Yeah, I did confirm that with Mr. Pinnock. <laughs> Andre A. McCarthy, our, this is. Our resident historian. Oh, that's straight. That sat back a little bit and he hit that lovely back over the bowler's head. Stand and deliver again from Otley. Andre Dennis shouldn't feel aggrieved by this. This is a good sign if I were a fast bowler because it went aerial. It was a little bit over pitched. So it allowed him to do that. So the ball wasn't going to do much from that length. But. If he can bring it back a little bit more and tempt Utley, then maybe he could be in 
in the making of getting his first first class wicket. The other thing to consider for Dennis is that all those full deliveries, Otley isn't trying to play them straight. He's yeah. trying to flick it into mid wicket. He's trying to get it into mid wicket. That's the other thing. If you get it full on straight, I would say if he gets that one of those on off stump. I think you'll be in the game there. Because yeah. those full deliveries, it's, it's kind of in middle and leg, which is fine. You're aiming for that middle and leg, which is, you know, you're aiming for middle. But if he gets one on off, so it's sort of off and middle. Yeah. And Otley tries to dig that one out, I think you'll be in problems there. Especially with the bat being a little bit angled as well. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe he's trying those, those deliveries. I think he's going too wide at the crease. If he goes closer to the umpire, he gets closer to the umpire and just goes wicked to wicked. Yeah, that's about that line. Yeah. But you don't want it to be too predictable. I guess he's trying to be as full as possible, make him play as and much as possible. And let's just get a look on the replay on that one as well, please. As well, if we can... Uh, and a look at that. Thank you very much, Dylan. He just about digs it out. And the bat's coming on at an angle as well. Just about digs it out. New man in Jade Gooley. And the good thing, oh no, the good thing for Dennis is that he has a brand new batter who's, of course, not accustomed to the pace and everything of the wicket. So if he gets a delivery like that, and he's bowling well to the left-hander again. So let's see if he can get yeah. one on target. Yeah, good stuff. That's good. a very good line and a very good length. Excellent delivery to start for a new batter. Yeah. I agree with you. And Gooley is one of those players who we must mention was a part of the historic team Yeah. that one day under-19 World Cup in 2016. Yeah, he's a solid fellow. He's a big fellow, Gooley. Yeah. Went off the boil a bit. He was out of the mix for some time. Yeah. And this season, he has done... He's been a mainstay. He hasn't performed as well as he would have liked. Yeah. That's a nice drive. Thick edge, though. But he's getting his foot out, so that's good. For five overs ball from Dennis. 34 for one after 10. 3.4 runs and over. That math is easy. Now, this could be very interesting here, Fozzie, because uh, we talked about the same angle that, that Otley will have trouble with. And if he, and McCarthy bowling now, if he takes it away from the right-handers, then, of course, he'd bring it back in. Yeah. So this could be very, very interesting if he gets that right delivery on the line. As you can see, a mid-wicket is in place as well. Beautiful stuff there. I probably want that man at mid-wicket to go a little bit more to his left. A little bit too straight for my liking, Pete Sam on the captain. As you saw there, the ball went backward of square with, with the inner movement. Just, just to give himself a chance. He's already getting himself warm, Pete Salmon. <laughs> yeah. Two left-handers at the crease as well. He must be fancying his chances. Yeah, I agree with you there. Jade Gooley comes halfway down the pitch. The throw comes in. Just misses the stumps. And will they get the overthrow? No, they won't. Excellent backing up there. But Jade Gooley was halfway down the pitch there. No communication at all from the Red Force batters. Yeah, what was he thinking? That was never one. He wanted one. Otley realized that there was danger. And OJ Shields had all three to aim at. He missed it. But I, th I think Gooley was back. But that was... 
Well, I don't know about that, but he had three stumps to aim at. He should have done a little <laughs> bit better there. Yeah, that could have been catastrophic for the Red Force. In swing again, Otley trying to fight fire with fire. Let's have a look at that uh, run out chance again here, Dylan. Uh, as Fozzie is unhappy with the situation and, and what is Otley doing. Yeah. Let's look at it if he would have made it. Yeah, I think uh, so. But there was never one there. Touch and go, you say. But uh, there was one thing for sure. It wasn't one. Yeah. Yeah. He basically ran one by himself, but it wasn't one. Too wide there from McCarthy. But the other thing is, after credit McCarthy, he had the presence of mind to get back to the stumps as well. You see bowlers a little bit lackadaisical in that, so in that regard sometimes. McCarthy was, was there to back up. Yeah, Utley to, is showing a touch of impatience. He's advancing to McCarthy just now to hit him over the top. Opening batter is not even the first hour of players yet. You want to see a little bit more of accumulation from advancing him. Advancing of the pitch now. And a thick edge again. Well, 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 he's trying to negate the spin, which isn't the, the swing, which isn't a bad ploy, but he hasn't had a, a proper look. At McCarthy, and so he's just trying things that just aren't working there. Yeah, it's obvious that the ball is going to be nipping back, and yeah. maybe had he stayed in his crease there, the umpire probably would have been thinking about something else. He was hit on the move. So that, that move towards the ball probably saved him. As you saw it there, it nipped back sharply from McCarthy. Late movement, and because Otley was on balance, he couldn't play the ball yeah. while it was moving yeah, properly. It actually, it actually hit That's the actually part, closer too. than we think. Yeah. Got an anticlimactic there from Andre McCarthy. But he is asking all the questions here. And that has been an absolutely fantastic maiden as well. 11 overs bowled, Fozzie. Yeah, Shot of the clouds above uh, Sabina Park. But they're still high and they're staying away, thankfully. Yeah, 34 for one. Not, not electric stuff by any stretch of the imagination. At three runs and overs, we see the helmets make their way on the field. They're going to have... I think two men under the bat, or well, Justin Beckford will be under the bat, but you'll also have Romain Morris wearing his helmet. We're going back to McCarthy's spell so far. Three overs, one for one. What he has done extremely well is that he has tried to bowl in the same area repeatedly. He's just repeating his action and pitching the deliveries on and about that off stump to ask questions. He's testing the faith. He's testing the patience of the batters. And he's just waiting for loose shots to happen. And that's what happened with Sifas Cooper. And he really gifted the wicket to McCarthy, who you could say has been, well, I wouldn't say could, but easily has been the best of the Jamaica Scorpions bowlers so far. And spin is into the attack with the captain for this clash. Flick nicely. Uh... Yeah, interesting, interesting ploy for, for spin already. But, uh, of course, Pete Sam is the captain, so he can do what he wants, I guess. Ooh, nice. Little drift there, little bounce. Yeah, slow turn. Slow turn. And because the moisture is in the wicket, it also aids him as well. As you saw on the opening day in the last round. Neither of these teams can win the championship. It would be something extraordinary if they could. And four teams still in with a chance. And two of them are playing each other. The Windwoods play the Leewoods. Barbados spread up against the academy team. Barbados can win the championship. Ooh, thick inside edge and just... Well fielded by that short leg fielder. Yeah, the, and the Harpy Eagles, they can also win the championship. They play the lowly combined campuses and colleges team. So it's all about who gets the most points in terms of bonus points, bowling points. Yeah, I think it, that is what I is going to determine. It's going to come it's yeah. going to come down to the bonus points. Yeah, because, because either I, way it is with with uh, at the end of the over with Leewards playing Winwards. 
and then Barbados will more than likely steamroll the CCC. Well, but Bar then Guy Barbados Guyana the Harper Eagles as well. Yeah. The, the Barbados play academy. And, uh, Barbados play academy. And sorry. Guyana play CCC. Yeah, so Guyana. So if, if, and, and the form Guyana is in, they could, get steam, they could steamroll the, uh, the CCC. It's all to play for. This is the only game I, ca I could say might be a sort of dead rubber, as it were. Technically. I think 2.3 It points. is alleged. <laughs> 2.3 points so, um, separate. 3.2 points separate the top four teams. McCarthy Otley battle to resume. Yeah. So the Windwoods have 90 points. Barbados 87.8. Guyana 87.2. And Lee was 86.8. It doesn't get closer than that. It doesn't get closer than that. And you say the Barbados, Barbados and Guyana, they're facing the two lowest teams. And the Windwards play fourth. Windwards first place play the fourth place team. So it's going to be very, very interesting over the next couple of days. And probably if we check the scores now, it's going to tell you that it's even more interesting. Too full. Well taken by roommate Morris. One-handed. But I think, I think that bodes well for our cricket, Fozzie, the cricket that is going to be competitive. And then, of course, uh, you know, next season, it will probably sting the Scorpions that they, have, that they weren't in the mix. Everybody was there were at the party, but we weren't. Yeah, we didn't get any invitation. Yeah. Trinidad and, uh, the Trinidad, and speaking with the Trinidad and Tobago think tank, they said, uh, I think they... They deemed themselves a little bit unfortunate because, of course, uh, I think Barbados Pride and the Guyana game that they had first up, it was a, it was a no result due to rain. Yeah, with the rain in yeah. St. Kitts. Yeah. Yeah. So they felt a little hard done by. And then their game also had the impact of the animals going onto the field. <laughs> yeah. That was the Guyana Trinidad yeah. game to start yeah. the season. Yeah. So, dancing up the pitch, and I'm 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 disappointed with Otley here. He's supposed to be the senior batter. He's supposed to be showing his wood. Um, I think what he's doing is is telling the bowler that he's a little bit uncomfortable with what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, the, and the bowler can take moral victory from that to know that he's not as easy facing him as you'd probably want to be moral victories are also part of it psychological battles that's played nicely straight that one it's almost like if i was mccarthy i would give him like a rank long hop let him smack me for six and be like oh oh you, you, you you're doing well 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 done and then and then yet that swinging in swinging delivery a big looping delivery that uh he might think i'm confident now i can stand and deliver this one but McCarthy, I think what you, you mentioned that um, his line and length has been really, really good, and that's good, especially at his pace. I don't think he has a big margin for error. Looser delivery, feeling for that one again, Otley, trying to punch it through that cover gap. 13 overs gone, 34 for one. It's drinks, and after the drinks big, it'll be the two Jamaicans, Fonzie and Penny, pretty boy and the legend, taking the commentary box.
<laughs> so welcome back to Sabina Park. One hour down for Pete Salmon, who is deputizing for Brandon King, who has been ruled out of this match with an well with a knee injury. Someone elevated to the captaincy because Marquino Minley, who was vice captain last week, has been ruled out of this game with an injury as well. So the Scorpions wounded and limping to the end. And they're trying to put on something for their fans and their family. Three debutants today. And one has a wicket already, Andre McCarthy. The other, the next two, Justin Beckford, who was in the 13 last week, and Andre Dennis, who opened the bowling. Goalie looking for his first run, and he still can't get it. The Scorpions have bowled two maidens on the trot. 16 dot deliveries, but that shouldn't be a problem, really. It's four day cricket. Still want to see some more energy from the Scorpions. It's a decent position, 34 for one. Even though you won the toss, you have, you have already taken a wicket. That completes another maiden for someone. Consecutive maidens to start. And it's, as I said, 34 for one after 14 overs. Yes, yeah, so far so good for both teams in the middle. It's a deep start so far. By the two teams. But it's good to see Andre McCarthy getting his first wicket in regional yes, cricket. So. And it was a good wicket as well. Getting the wicket of Cooper. And he went for 12 from 30 deliveries. And so far, McCarthy, four overs, one for one. Excellent spell of bowling on debut by the young man from St. Elizabeth. Getting the opportunity at the regional level. And so far, so good for young McCarthy. And it's obvious that Kishon Otley wants to... Or Kishon Otley, for, for those who pronounce it that way. He obviously wants to get at the bowling. And for someone who... Is an aggressive player. There's nothing more annoying to them than not being able to score boundaries or being forced to leave alone a lot of deliveries. And I think McCarthy has found a way to keep him very quiet. Almost dragged it on. And there it is. There was width. But that movement, or that late inward movement, made it too close for him to play the cross batted shot. It was wide though. Nothing wrong with the shot, to be quite honest. Just didn't time it. I think he was trying to hit that ball too hard through the covers. Acres of space on the offside as well. Yeah, and, it, and that, that comes back to the point that I was making. The anxiety to score and the anxiety to hit the ball into the fence. Key and create pressure when there's really no pressure. You're absolutely correct, Foster. Yeah, just imaginary pressure. This time around, McCarthy changing angle. Yeah. Going round the wicket now. Limit that width. Good delivery. You realize that delivery came back sharply to the left handed Hatley as well. And, the, and so the men in and around the, the bat, especially mid wicket and mid on, they have to be on their toes because Otley is clearly trying to steal a march he's trying to get off strike he's trying to rotate he's trying to get ghoulie on strike and we see the man at square leg push back to deep backward square who is justin beckford could be that a short delivery is coming from mccarthy that was a hike <laughs> it was yeah he went towards the ball and He's trying to lift it over mid off. Came off the inner half of the bat and it's squirted away down to backward square. 
and it's as if Pete Salmon knew that something was going to happen. I mean, pushing back that man at, at square leg. He has 16 from 44. And by no stretch of the imagination, that's bad. I mentioned last, last year he had a wonderful tournament as well, Hotley. And so far, Gouli faced the 14 deliveries, Foster. Haven't got off the markers yet. I think Excellent. all 14 have been to Pete Salmon. That's poor feeling I think it's from Buchanan. Buchanan. Has to do better there. That's free runs. And Gouli now gets off strike. And gets off the mark as well. Yeah. Well, he's back on strike, but he gets off the mark. Javor Royal putting in the work. Mackenzie had to save it. See a few spectators coming in. Not much. <laughs> it looks like a family. Maybe it's a family of one of the Davitons as well. <laughs> I think it's Andre McCarthy's family. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. But it's th what I'm sure about is 37 for one after 15 overs. Pete Salmon, for the first time, he will be bowling to Kishore Otley. And this should be very interesting because he has shown, that's Otley, that he wants to score and score quickly. And Salmon is, who was disappointed with his efforts in the last game. I, I don't think the Scorpions spinners can feel too pleased about what they did. That spin, slow spin. Someone is very economical and he's really going to be asking questions of Otley. And so far this season, he's been the pick of the bowlers for the Scorpions as well. Over 30 wickets to his name this season. Excellent job by Pete Someone. That's a sweep shot. That's going to go very close to the boundary. Indeed, it's going to be four. As quick as OJ Shields is, he's not going to stop it. Inventive there from Otley, showing his white ball skills. And a little paddle sweep, just lapping it around the corner for a boundary. And the first boundary of Salmon, the first scoring runs off him. 41 for one. Very innovative was John Hartley. Very aggressive player by nature is Otley. Shown last year as well. He was very dominant. Spin again. And if you realize it's slow spin, very slow through the year this time from Pete Salmon. Yeah. And as I said, it, it's just what is in the wicket. The moisture that is in the wicket is benefiting someone here. And he realizes he's not trying to bowl as quick as he normally goes about his business. Getting a nice bounce as well. Would you be tempted to have someone else in front of the bat? That completes over number 16. At 41 for one, the wicket to fall was Cooper of the bowling of the debutant, Andre McCarthy. Yeah, I was just about to say that you could be tempted to have another person in front of the bat for someone given that he's getting that or even a second slip or a, or a gully and i support you on that as well foster he realized hotly tends to reach for the ball as well instead of allowing the ball to come to him 
that can be Don's fault as well. But this time around, OJ Shields has been replaced. He's been replaced. He's going to replace McCarthy yeah. from this our commentary box end. McCarthy was very special in his first spell. Picking up the only wicket to fall as well. I think he got one for four. And so far, in my eyes, Pete someone doing a fantastic job in rotating his bowlers so far. He's not new to captaining. Obviously, at this level, he's, he's new. This is, this is his first full season. He has played all the games for the Scorpions. One of only three players on the field. Well, four players on the field. The next one is not on the field. And that's Kurt McKenzie's off for, for a moment. Ramon Lewis is on the field for him. But Morris, Salmon, Abhijay Mansingh, and McKenzie, as well as Carlos Brown, they have played all the games for the Scorpions so far. And the good but Salmon has kept in St. Catherine CC for a very long time now. And he's a very experienced cricketer as well. Yeah, I think he kept it in Inswood in that period where they were dominating schoolboy cricket, urban era, and schoolboy cricket to some extent. You mentioning about schoolboy cricket. As a brother of Westin is number three batsman in Kurt McKenzie. Bowl a brilliant spell yesterday in schoolboy cricket. Picking up eight wickets for nine runs. Yeah, that's the Woolmer's boys. Indeed, against Bridgeport High. Former under 15 player as well. Yeah, Gooley looks very compact. Easy on the eyes, gets a good stride into the ball for a big man. He does pack some power. You can see that he he has some power in him. And I look at the batting to come for the Red Force team. Jango scored a double century the last game. And of course, Mohammed, fast experienced players, scored a century in the last game as well. He is into his foot, none for 10 so far in his second spell. Started from th this end this morning. Just bowled the three overs. Then McCarthy came in the attack and gets his award. Picking up a, a wicket on debut. And that should be a plus for the young man as well. Been around the set of. Or sometime faster. Well, this season. Yeah, all season he has been around it. And getting the opportunity, the final game of the season. And making a mark immediately. Quietly goes about his business. He's not one that is overly expressive when you see him. As I said, he hails from a parish that produces so many cricketers for Jamaica. St. Elizabeth. And it's good to see the coaching staff giving the youngsters the opportunity at the regional level. Three debutants in this game so far. What I've realized from this surface as well is that there's no pace in it either. It's not frightening. It's not electric. <laughs> I'm still a little bit surprised that the Scorpions didn't bat first because as you see the outlook of the surface, you can almost see your face in it, which tells you it's not going to really do much. It's, it's dry. It's going to slow down. And I think this is the same surface which the Scorpions played the Hurricanes on in that fourth round game, that fifth round game. So it's going to be a long haul. It's well, 41 for one after 17 overs. Well, actually... I had a chance to do the toss this morning. And of course, the Scorpion won the toss in Pete Salmon. 
and I asked him any particular reason why and he was saying three pace attack and there's a lot of moisture in the wicket but we know here at Sabina Park after the first 45 minutes or so it's a flat Sabina Park wicket as if you're on a main road Foster yeah and we saw that in the last round 400 plus by the Harpy Eagles the Scorpions didn't even get close to that as much as as flat as as flat as flat as it was they struggled to get on the 150 plus had a better showing in the second innings but it was just too far behind oh yeah that's what i was talking about having that next man in front of ja uh Utley because he's pushing so hard at the ball we realize now pete someone put a forward shot in and it's not spinning much so and that's what happens a, a element of doubt is created now because there's a man in front of him he's gonna try to do something different he was trying to paddle that ball around the corner got outside the line though oddly who i said play for the west indies against australia recently but also played a couple of odis against bangladesh prior to that he goes for a big sweep it's more a slug sweep and it goes all the way in front of the car park just beside the kingston cricket club lost it for a few here but and there was a tell from Otley that he was gonna go big the bat was extended in his hand told him that he was going to do something different a big shot the first six of the innings and that completes the over at 47 for one shot of hunger there coming in from Otley but Pete someone continues to be very very economical for the Scorpions very experienced cricketer been around the setup for a number of years getting the opportunity this season a full season and so far doing an outstanding job for the scorpions getting over 30 wickets so far in this competition and had some valuable contribution with the bat as well i think he made 87 in one of that game but if you realize so far the scorpions haven't won a traditional team foster for over two years nicely played brilliantly fielded by royal that's some outstanding work from the big man in the backward point region. Flung himself away to his right, his weaker side. And Gouli thought he had runs in his sight. Royal congratulated by his teammates, but he did well. Yes, great commitment there from Javoy Royal. Was special in that semi-finals game against Kingston with his team. End up on the losing side last weekend. Picked up five wickets in that game. That's gonna be runs. It's gonna be four of them as well. As quick as Royal wants to be, he can't stop it. Overpitched by Shields. And the 50 comes up for the Red Force. And they are marching on here. As I said, not much in the wicket now. It's gotten as flat as you would like as a batter. And that's easy runs. Yeah, over pitch delivered there from OJ Shields. And terrific timing by Gouli. Easy pickings for him as well. It was in the arc. There's a number three batter. You expect to cash in on those deliveries. A little bit surprised that Shields hasn't gone short as yet to, to Gouli, who looks who is always looking to get that stride in towards the ball. There's a deep backward square and a fine leg. He's over the wicket now, Shields. And Gouli looks busy. He looks as if he wants to score. He wants to put pressure on the bowlers. He's not being 
aggressive by any stretch of the imagination. He's just been positive. Yeah. Even his defensive strokes have been positive. There's some intent in how he wants to score, how he's going to play. And that's a good sign for a number three player. He has to be busy. You want your number three player to be dominant. You want him to be imposing, not just physically, as Gouli is, but also with the bat in hand. And that came off the face of the bat. Luckily, he didn't hang it out. <laughs> came back sharply to the left-handed Gouli. And the important thing with that shot, he played it with very soft hands. Hence why he didn't carry through to Kurt McKenzie at the second slip region. And the Scorpions definitely want to improve on their fielding. It was a horrific showing in the last game. They dropped double figures. Chances. And at this regional level, you can't expect to drop so much catch, Foster. You know, on top. I don't know which and level. Shoot and in fuck in yeah, any I don't cricket. Know which, I don't know which level you're going to drop catches <laughs> and survive. You just, you just have to take your chances. Beautiful, beautifully driven. But straight to McCarthy. She just has to bring back his length a little bit here. Just too full. Full face of the pack being presented by Gooley. Look up. Correct batter as well. Shows great temperament so far. For yeah. a short delivery from OJ, she's to close out over number 19 at 51 for one. Yeah, I think the, the Scorpions, they need another wicket somewhere to feel a little bit more comfortable going into lunch. This has been a solid start from the Red Force. As much as Otley has been itching to score and score boundaries or to put pressure back on the bowlers, still has been a very confident and solid start from the visitors. Let's see Vikash Mohan, the substitute. Beat someone will be continuing. We'll be bowling to Utley. Paddle again. And there's going to be runs again. At least two of them. I don't think the Scorpions are going to worry too much because they're going to still believe that it's a pressure that he's been building on Utley that has forced him to, to try things. And so far, he has mastered the shot, Foster. Yeah. And both occasion getting two. Good Beautiful delivery. Beautifully by someone there. Excellent delivery. Very slow through the air and spun sharply away from the left handed Utley. Excellent goal in here by Pete Someone. Almost, almost gloving it to the wicket keeper who started to move down the leg side. And he didn't get it off the bat this time with enough power. And it just scooped past the right glove of Morris. Good anticipation. Mansing was also moving in anticipation of that sweep shot. But the, ever since the man from short leg has gone in front of Otley, he has now been forced to find another way to cope with someone, and that has been to, to, to paddle. I was looking to cut that one. That was too fast and wide. But he has to be careful, Otley. It's a dangerous shot, especially when the ball isn't really coming onto the bat. Just has to trust his defense. And so far, Pete, someone has been very economical so far. There it would have gone straight to short leg. You can't have it both ways. 
Can't have it both ways, Scorpions. It goes off the bat onto the pad. And that runs for Utley. Takes him to 29 at the end of the 20th over. It's 54 for one. Well, so far, even Stevens here at Sabina Park. Been a quiet start so far by both teams. I would say a sedate start. Scorpions would want to break this partnership as soon as possible. They want the Red Force team to run away. They want another wicket or two before lunch, Foster. And they've gone to Javor Royal. And making what? a return to the team. Played the game against the that would be the Hurricanes. No, it would have been the game that the Scorpions won. The Academy team and the Hurricanes. Didn't have one of the best games though, Foster. Well, he's back in the last round. Fixtures at Sabina Park. Let's see how he starts here. As I said, made his debut against Trinidad and Tobago last year. Royal, the left arm orthodox bowler. And... As Marlon Pinock mentioned, he's in good form. Last week, he took six wickets. And the week before, he had a five-wicket haul as well. So, so that's 11 wickets from two games. Yeah. <laughs> that one is spinning back towards the stubs. Joel Wilson contemplated, contemplated and said, it's not out. As I said, he made his debut against... Uh, the Red Force had two wickets in the first innings. Had a big wicket on his debut as well. Don't think he will ever forget. Slug sweep. There was another tail from Jan from Otley. Seized on the moment. And it goes all the way for another six. There it went. There is the tail. The bat gets a little bit extended in his hands. Yes, indeed. A shot of authority there. By the man Hartley. Very aggressive play and shown great aggression there in this occasion. There was bounce there. Turn as well. After this over, you're going to be hearing from Andrew Chan and Marlon Pinot to take you to lunch. Goes again. Goes forward of square this time. Andre Dennis. Uh, giving you the strongest of throw from the boundary. But it's a long way out there. It's a bigger side of the ground. Given that the, the pitches have gone. Even more westerly you would say. Yeah. Partnership is 33. Otley has 37. It's looking to... Dominate Royal here, Otley. Sweep again coming. Yeah. And that completes the over at 62 for one at the end of the 21st over. And you see the replay. Going for the sweep. It was going down the leg side clearly. As I said, after this message, you're going to be hearing from Andrew Chan. Salmon resumes the key on Huntley. It's been a stand and deliver innings. That's actually Ghoulie on strike, my apologies. Yeah, it's been a stand and deliver innings from Otley. Jid Ghoulie just trying to find his rhythm here. Well, Jid Ghoulie made his first class debut back in 2016 and 17 at the regional four day competition. 
He was also named in the West Indies under 19 World Cup squad in 2016 with players. I think Kevin Imlak was in that squad as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting hour and a half here, Penny. I mean, I think the the Red Force will be happy with the their run rate and the loss of only one wicket. Jamaica have bowled well. The spinners have uh, asked questions, but I think it's just the attacking nature of Keon Otley, 37 of 68 every time it's a, like I said, a standard delivery. Shot of a plane there in the distance, probably heading away from the Norman Manley Airport, and Cooley goes to the sweep, and he gets that down to backward square leg for four. In front of the Kingston Cricket Club, Jed Gooley is enjoying himself as he comes into double figures here, 10 off 34. Shot off authority there by Jed Gooley. You look at his first class career, 12 match, 626 runs at an average of 32.4, not a bad average. And if the over 66 for one, and of course, uh, it's, a, it's a concern for the, I mean, of course, Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana are reputedly countries, the nations that have uh, the best players of spin. So the Jamaica spinners are going to have to come very good here. Not that they haven't been asking questions, but they just need to string together those deliveries a little bit more. And that's what Keon Otley does well. He derails them, Penny. Otley's very positive so far. Well, both butters in the middle. Goes for this pull again. And it's straight into the short leg feeler. He's going to wear that one. And Ooh. play will be paused immediately because he, he's wearing that one on the full there. That is, looks like a horrible blue. Yes, that eat with ferocious power. By Hartley, let's look at the replay here. Bang. Into the back there. That is going to sting. Some history about Sabina Park is coming in as well. Uh. As a young fellow, Justin Beckford as well. Still lying down. Really going to hurt very, very much there. Really, really unfortunate there for the young fellow. Well, he realize as he came back in the commentary box, Andrew. See, the sun scheme out very hot here at Sabina Park. Yeah, you have to be the bravest man in the <laughs> world to feel that, sh that short leg and silly middle. It was dangerous, dangerous position. It is here. very dangerous. I got a number of hit feeling at that region as well in my cricket career. Yeah. He's going to need a whole can of magic free for that one. I certainly hope, I don't know with the impact if it would have struck any. Well, he's up though. Yeah. And that's I good sense for the walking. Scorpions. Yeah, he is. He's stretching it out there. I think that, that that bodes well because, I mean, of course, if you had anything broken and they'd be in extreme pain, if you can move about like that, then at least it's a... Maybe it's a on the soft spot. <laughs> an absolutely brilliant bruise as well. Maybe that's on the fatty part, yeah. not on the bone. <laughs> if that had hit might him. have a, a bruise the size of a cork ball on his back, so it <laughs> looked like he has a cork ball. But we hit him so hard that the seams are imprinted as well. But uh, he's up and walking and he's getting a pat on the back. From his, from his elder brother as well. <laughs> that's his brother. The wicked keeper one. That's yeah, should be he's still having words with Daniel Beckford. <laughs> Just having some fun with his smaller brother. In Justin Beckford. And I think uh, I think Keon Otley apologized again as well as he passed him, so that's good to see. Good camaraderie. I always enjoy uh, I mean of course as commentators we have, we have the privilege to be on the ground 
close up with the players and see see them in, a, in close up and, and, and interact with them. And uh, it's always good to see that camaraderie. Joshua De Silva was going across and had hugs and laughs with RBG Mansing. Up in the air and uh, Beckford almost takes a catch. And that would have been lovely after his injury there. Hartley always on the attack here. Let's have a look at this one. This time he goes with the paddle sweep and it's just up in the air and balloons over Beckford at that short leg position. He Think. tried that paddle sweep on a number of occasions, Otley. It's only worked on one. Uh, the first time, actually, against Salmon. Nice flick by Gooley. And again, short leg uh, has another bruise, another lash. Royal into his second over. None for eight so far. Goes back into this one and gets that one down to fine leg. I don't think that's where he intended it. He was looking more square. But he still gets it down and that's runs for Jit Gooley once again. Poor delivery coming in from Chavoy Royal. It was short straight on the line of the leg stump. And it's a could say a freebie. I think Gooley tried to go too hard at that one if you look at the replay. Yeah, absolutely um, correct, yeah. Andrew. And uh, just set a placement, went for power over placement. But four runs nonetheless, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, always favors the batters in this game. Penny, as you very well know. <laughs> Instead of the brave. <laughs> Good delivery. But unlike, unlike uh, goalkeepers, I think wicket keepers get a little bit more respect in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the job that they do behind the stumps. Because of course, goalkeepers in football, they, they, they only called upon not as regularly. But a wicket keeper is involved, if you really think about it, a wicket keeper is involved in almost every ball of the game. End of the over, 72 for the loss of one. Solid stuff from the Scorpions. We have just about 20 minutes to go before the lunch break. I would say the Scorpions would be very, ha uh, not the Scorpions, the Red Force would be very happy with the, with the position they're in. Definitely, they'd want to go into lunch without a further loss. And so far, these two putters in the middle doing a tremendous job so far for the Red Force team. They mentioned this Sabina Park wicket. A lovely wicket to bat on Anjo. And so far in this West Indies Regional Championship, we see some massive scores. Yeah, totally happened in round six. Uh, scores all over. A little bit officially there from Gooley, has to be careful. Well, according to the last game, the Red Force played have scored over 500 runs. He opens the face nicely and he will just get it down. The uh, feel from back of point is well running around there. A little tumble there, but I think that's Carlos Brown. That's yes, excellent. good athletic work there by Carlos Brown. Moving sharply to his right. Yeah. Our good friend Fozzie actually talked about uh, the fielding efforts from the Scorpions and he said it's been poor all season. They do certainly do look a little bit sharper today. Well, it's in patches so far. Well, that's, that's a good point there, Penny, as well. That's... Uh, Pummel through the extra cover region, off the back foot, deliver, stand and deliver from Kian Otley once again. Short Moves and wide, the 40s. easy pickings for Otley, he won't miss out on that, it's bread and butter for the left-hander, who's in a fantastic form so far. The score is up to 77 for one, and if you're just joining us, the Scorpions, they won the toss this morning. And asks the Red Force 
to take first strike here at Spina Park. And one wicket to fall this morning. Of course, that wicket of Cooper was caught by the wicket keeper Morris off the bowling of the Debuton. Andre McCarthy and he went for 13. Nice push up the long off here to end the over. 78 for one after 24. Yeah, he's been uh, the most of the bowlers uh, today that uh, on show so far. Andrew McCarthy really has been the best and he deserved that, that wicket as well. Well, of course, I think he bowled some four or five overs and in that he had about four maidens and a wicket to his name. What a start to his first class career. Taking a look at the other games around the region, what's happening with the Barbados Pride? They are 79 for three against the West Indies Academy. That's over at Coolidge in Antigua. Leeward Islands Hurricanes versus the Windward Islands Volcanoes. 96 for four, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. So that's an interesting turn of events here. But right now, what's happening in, in St. Augustine? Goes to the paddle sweep again. Does Otley, does he get it fine enough? No, the fielder does well running around. That's excellent work. That's a good diving stop there. And they come back for two. That's what I'm seeing. The Scorpions in patches so far. But if you look at that attempt and that work from as a 50 partnership comes up from 91 deliveries. If you look at that work coming in from Kirk McKenzie, that was a great work. Excellent commitment shown by Kirk McKenzie. Yeah, and Otley is uh, brave enough to sweep and paddle despite the fine leg, the leg slipping position, I should say. This one he flicks fine as well. And as you mentioned, he's very brave, and that's why he's now on 45. And 80 runs for the Red Force team so far. I would Me? say. The Red Force just out by a thin margin in this first session. Yeah, the combined campuses and colleges over in St. Augustine have slipped to 65 for 5 against the Guyana Harpy Eagles Pinney. Mm. Yeah, taking a look at that now. Niall Smith has 2. Isaiah Thorne has 1. Um, excellent feeling at leg slip there. That is brilliant stuff. That's... Javon Buchanan diving away to his right. And uh, that man, Vera Sami Pomal, has two, Penny. Made that 632 first class wickets. And Terry Diaz, two for five of seven. Under a runner. <laughs> Why bother? With pieces when you have Vera Sami Permol. That's what I'm seeing. The Guyana Arp Eagles have a perfect opportunity at the completion of the 25th at 81 for 1. A perfect opportunity to win this Western East Regional Championship for 2024. Yeah, indeed. Playing against the bottom of the table, Combined College and Campus, who yet to register a win in this year's competition. And, uh, bit early to call, but it doesn't look <laughs> like they're going to register a win here. No offense to the CCC. They're really trying their best. It's one of the developmental teams from uh, Western East Cricket. And uh, certainly they'll be hoping to be stronger next year. Up in the air, and that's out. Otley has thrown away his hand. Pete Salmon strikes. Unfortunate end for Kian Otley. He goes with the score on 81. It's 81 for two. And a very important wicket for Captain Pete Someone just before lunch on day one. And a man who was well set in Keon Hutley. He went for 45 of 75 deliveries. And the Scorpions caught their second 12 That's minutes red before. Lost their second penny. Thanks for your correction, Mr. Andrew Chang. 12 minutes before the lunch break interval here at Sabina Park on day one of the run seven action from Sabina Park. 
Another stand and deliver innings from Otley. Good start, but uh, unfortunate for him. And coming out at number four is that man who has been in sparkling form all season for the Chunnan to be great force. A senior member of the squad, a long-standing servant of uh, Trinidad and Tobago and West Indies cricket, of course, and cricket in general, Mr. Jason Mohammed. Very experienced campaigner, he's Jason Mohammed. Made his first class debut back in January of 2006 mm. versus Jamaica. Yes, indeed. In St. Augustine. Wow. That's a long time ago. And now we're in 2024, and he's still playing first-class cricket. Yeah. Closing in on uh, two decades on cricket, if he makes it up to 2026, Penny. And 13 first-class century to his name as well. Yeah. Scored his last in that game. The last game, a matter of fact. As I heard him saying... He set out for two centuries this season. Got two so far. It's a whole new challenge. But here he is, back at Sabina Park. Probably familiar surroundings to him. And he's off the mark immediately. That's good cricket there from him. Will it get all... No, the sort of uh, half stopped in the end. <laughs> that's, at that mid-off position. That's Andre Dennis. At mid off. So off the mark immediately. Indeed. Born September 23rd, 1986. He's 37 years of age. Highest score in regional cricket was 220. Three hundred and twenty, did you say correctly, Penny? Two twenty. Oh, Two twenty, <laughs> Penny. Well, that makes sense. Yes. And also have twenty first class half century as well. Yeah. Good career. Excellent really, really career. Good career. Yeah. Nice push by Gooley. The single is a little bit streaky, and Gooley ran wide as he ran to the non strikers end. Better throw, and I think he might have been in trouble there. A streaky end to the over, 84 for two. is Jason Mohammed's 100 first class game, Andrew. Yep. Already 4,876 runs at an average of 30.7. Excellent first class record as well. Been an interesting session. I would say slight advantage to the Red Force. Just past that short leg field again. He deserves a catch back foot after wearing a, a lash on his back from Otley. Well, one thing for sure, though, is that ball had to stop for him to take a catch there. This could be an interesting battle here. Royal and the right-handed Mohammed. Of course, Mohammed has been in good form. Let's have a look at the field. And a field who's going to the back of square leg, but he comes into a conventional square leg position is still a short leg mid off and mid on are in the circle I like that extra cover position there Penny. I still think a man should be just in front of the bat as well Royal tends to 
spin the ball away and then drift one occasionally into the right hander put your ball into a vast experience but as well played a lot of cricket in his career and still playing is Jason Mohammed. Yep. Played for the Kayana Amina Amina Warriors in CPL as well. Did very well. Played for the Scorpions as well. But I think it's a it's a good opportunity. Of course, uh, yeah, Chundan to make a red force could have been closer to the top of the table had Rain not rain affected one of their games so and they had another game affected as well key games against guyana on barbados goes for the sweep that's going down leg i think no he gives that one looked like he was going down leg to me but the umpire judges that jason moment is gone and that's a big wicket there at the end of the over 84 for three well 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 Poor judge shot just before lunch by Jason Mohammed with all his experience. Still suffered. Let's have a look at the replay again. And let's look at the replay as my good friend Andrew Chung. It spun back. It did spun back. And would have pitched in line, I think. That's what convinced the umpire. I think it would have pitched in line and there and it spun back it straightened I guess you want to call it that let's have a slow look at it here it definitely hit him in front I think my question was if it's if it spun too much and and what went was if it pitched online in terms of middle and leg but the decision was up to the umpire I clearly thought that it pitched on middle and leg, it pitched in line. Amir Jangu comes out in the number five position. He's the number five batter, and he's wearing the number five on his back as well, Penny. <laughs> Indeed. But he need no second invitation as well. It was very brutal yeah. in the last game, scoring a double century. He did indeed. But uh, Jason Mohammed scored a century in the last game and he's out for one. So, great myth cricket is always has his little twists and turns. Glorious game of uncertainty. Now at this stage, I would have to say it's on as even in terms of the session. And let's see if the Red Force can close it out without any further loss. Just four minutes to go. Excellent freeling by the Davidton Andre McCarthy. Showing great commitment there, Andrew. Yeah. And that will make Fuzzy, a.k.a. party boy, feel very good. Full toss. Flick nicely too. But uh, straight to the backward square leg. Unfortunate for Gouli. Looking for that gap there. If he had picked it, we have gotten some runs. Forward. And he's bowled a lot of those deliveries to the left-hander. Salmon teasing deliveries. Django made his list A debut for the West Indies under 19 back in 2014 and 15. Plays with players like a Brandon King and Nicholas Puran and also Rama Lewis. Rama Lewis was the captain at that time as well. Not yeah. in the Scorpions team today though. The goalie is trying to be a little too forceful here. Need to just see out the over, see out the time. Over complete, 84 for three. A maiden by Mr. Salmon. What would be very important for the Scorpions now, if they get a next wicket before the launch, they would have won the first session. But so far as it stands, Andrew, it's nil all here at Sabina Park. <laughs> I think uh, I think the one thing the Scorpions can be happy about is that they've taken wickets um, regularly to just break up little partnerships that will happen happening because of course Otley and Gouli had just passed a 50-run partnership and were going along fairly comfortably. Before I would say Otley threw away his hand, but 
for the Scorpions will have in the back of the head what happened against the Harpy Eagles, 58 for 5, and then your team ends up posting 400 plus. To realize three wickets to fall for the Red Force. Poor shot selection for them as well. It's not that the Scorpions bowling exceptionally well. It's just poor shot selection. But who those to the Scorpions? Yeah, they have a chance here, I think, uh, Scorpions, to see if they can limit the Red Force. Final over before lunch on D1. Up in the air. Might just be pad alone on that. They Let's turn our attention for a bad to pad. Joel Willis on this occasion. Not interested. Yeah, yeah outside the Austin. Excellent decision. That sweep has been a dangerous ploy for the Trinidad left-handed batters. Continues to be Amir Jangu. Not off the mark yet. Guli going on to have a word with him. 18 or 57 years. Telling him, hey, it's almost lunch. Behave yourself. Maybe just buying some time <laughs> with a minute to go before 12 o'clock. He'll want to make this delivery the final delivery before lunch this very well might be well i uh, you know it's one more delivery at least. <laughs> jamaicans will be happy with their over rate 28.5 that's good for the uh for that in terms of at the end of play but of course the spinners have been on since the 11th penny uh, we did see a little bit of O.J. Shields coming back. I, I would have loved to see a second spell from Andrew McCarthy, to be honest. Um, they might bring him back on when uh, a right-hander comes to the crease. Maybe Josh De Silva, when Josh De Silva comes to bat. Of course, that uh, dangerous outswing from the right-handers. Closing in the field now, mid-off and mid-on in position. Maybe they want to tempt Jangu with a big hoik. Well, now is the final delivery before lunch. Plays it down, plays it as if it is a dangerous grenade into the pitch there. And it's been an intriguing first session here, 84 for 3. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Force didn't look too troubled, but the Jamaica Scorpions struck at the right times. Some final words from Penny before we take a short break. Evenless Stevens here at Spina Park. Both teams going to lunch, have something to feel proud of. But at it stands here at Spina Park at lunch. The Red Force, they are 84 for the loss of three. We'll be back in 40 minutes for the resumption.
Uh, welcome back to Sapina Park. It's round seven action between, of course, the host of Jamaica Scorpions and, of course, the Chinina Didi and Red Force here at Sapina Park. The Scorpions, they won the toss this morning and asked Chinidad to take for a strike. Their mass 84 for three. First wicket was Cooper. He was caught by Morris off the bowling, off the debut on Andre McCarthy. As you see, a special welcome to Jerome Foster. Yep. It's getting overcast here at Sabina Park. Showers in the northeast. It's almost as if it's bearing down on Sabina Park now, but it's going to be Pete Summon to Jid Gooley. And the Scorpions had a, I would say, a better tasting lunch at the, at the end of the session because they were in some problems. They were struggling to pick up wickets. And you see the ground staff huddling now and it's becoming a problem for Gooley. You can see why they're beckoning for the covers because it's getting darker and darker here at Sabina Park. I was about to say that the Scorpions would feel better at lunch. They would love the taste of lunch. We picked up two wickets for a run. And at one stage, it felt as if sending in the Red Force to bat was a wrong decision. Two quick wickets, one for someone who has the ball in hand, and the other for his club mate, Jabour Royal. The big wicket of Jason Mohammed. And Jason Mohammed was his first wicket in first class cricket. And he picked him up again, so he has a winning battle against Mohammed, Jabour Royal. But 84 for 3, what do you think the, the strategy or the plan will be here from the Red Force? You probably can give your thoughts after the over. And a maiden over to start. Another one for Pete Summon. 10th over bold, 1 for 25. 84 for 3. Well, I think the Red Force team should be thinking to bat as long as possible. Try to get a score over 272. 80 and we've seen over the few games here at Sabina Park played by the Scorpions the batters haven't gotten enough runs to really trouble their opponents so I think the Red Force think should be looking over 280 Foster to 300 runs won't be easy from here on. Not at all. As Royal starts immediately on the money. The Django who scored a double century in the last game. It was very brutal. It's gonna play that sweep shot. And Django I wouldn't say let me put it the right way. He has some familiarity with Sabina Park because he would have played for the Jamaica Talibans. In fact, and maybe open. wouldn't even say Jamaica, Jamaica Sabina Park because when he played for the Talibans, they didn't play a game here. The Talibans, they haven't been here since 2019, and they're not going to be here this year. It's no longer in existence, by the way, the Talibans. So just to get that clear, but he has played for a Jamaican-based team before. That's what I'm trying to say. And he he opened. In the 60 competition, he also played in the T20 competition. Edge, oh no, hits him on the pad. Gooley. And he goes down to short third. Man, he hit him on the outer half of the thigh guard on his back leg. Yeah, that was outside the line. And Royal has caused some problems for the left-handers. Delivery spinning back towards the stumps. That's in the air. It's going to be safe. 
I don't think the Scorpions would mind. And I like this field, by the way, from someone. It's aggressive and it's also defensive because for either of Guli or Jango to get off the mark, they have to be forceful. They have to do something out of the ordinary. And there are two men around the bat on the leg side hoping for something to pop up. Those are short leg and leg gully. The, the leg gully has come on and he's gone to square leg. He's going so, forward or square. So far so good for Javoy Royal. Asking a lot of questions here at Savannah Park. Almost went right through Gouli there. And that completes the over at 87. Well, the score is having some issues, but one thing for sure, that's the end of the over. As you can see, the ground staff getting very active here at Sabina Park as well. Mm -hmm. I think umpire just met as to decide what's the next step. Some showers over by the northeast side of Sabina Park as well. 87 for 3. The Red Force after lost the toss this morning and were sent into bat. Very, very bleak skies here at Sabina Park. Excellent line been employed so far by Pete Summon. Varying his pace a lot on this picket. And hence why he's been very economical so far. And a very attacking field set here by Pete Summon, captain in the Scorpions for the very first time in regional cricket. It's a good look so far, Foster. Yeah, and he's putting pressure on, and that's good to see. They're relatively, well, I wouldn't say Gouli is relatively new. He has been there for 66 balls, but he hasn't been scoring as free as he would like. Jango is facing his 13th, so he is relatively new. And there's a squeeze on from the Scorpions here to just restrict any free flowing of runs or any free rotation of strike. That is something that has been lacking throughout this season from the Scorpions. Yeah, that's a bad delivery. That's going to get him some runs. And his team, the Red Force, more runs. Four of them off the bat. The first boundary for Amir Jango. And takes him up to six. And 91 now for three. Bad the line delivery by Captain Pete Summon. A free beyond the long line of the leg stump. Easy pickings for Jango. Who's in... A tremendous form this season. And he won't miss out on that. That's bread and butter for him, Foster. Much better line this time. And that completes over number 32. Yeah, 91 for 3. Dennis Bulai, JDF player, Nash and Scorpions player as well. Beside the Scorpions captain, Brandon King, who is out of this game with a, a knee injury, a knee niggle, according to the head coach. King will be part of the West Indies A team to play Nepal starting on April 27, so he should be leaving next week to go to Nepal. World Cup, I think, is a big priority. I would say a huge priority. It's going to be in the region. The Royal has a bigger problem, and it's to get one of these men out. Gouli just pushes that one up to mid off for a single. It's a big lad. Yeah. 
little bit surprised that the Scorpions have moved away from that leg gully fielding position. Fired in by Roy. Maybe because of that extra bounce in the previous over where Jangu was looking to sweep. The ball just popped up into that square leg region where Jabon Buchanan is. And if we realize the field for Chavoy Royal, there's a man at the deep back with square leg bounce and also a deep mid wicket. I think they have realized as well that the Red Force players, they have shown the intent to sweep. That extra bounce could even be a downfall if they don't get over the ball. And also, the fact that the man is at square leg, there's no easy single with the two men back on the boundary. So they can't just work the ball into the onside for an easy single. They have to, have to be precise. And they'd have to be forceful with their, sh their stroke making. There are only two men on the offside. And he's going to be piercing that offside because what? It's a full toss. That's easy pickings for anybody. And especially for someone who is coming off a double century. Amir Django, he made that look very, very easy. Just gap that one. Tremendous timing there by Django. Over pitch delivery. Chavoy Royal and got the treatment it deserved. 96 for three here at Spina Park. And you realize so far the overrate has been great so far by the Scorpions as well. Into the 30th, 3rd over of the inning so far. And that is excellent overrate. Yeah, when you have two finger spinners operating, one is a left arm bowler, one is right arm, the overs are gonna go through pretty quickly. The two sin catching cricket clubs boys operating at the moment at the completion of the thirty third is ninety six for three. The Scorpions would want to break this partnership as soon as possible here. They want Jangu and Guli to settle in here. These two in the middle can be very vital for the Red Forest team. Still Batches to come, Captain De Silva as well, very capable. Yeah, it does it take the edge? Yes, it does. It does take the edge. Romain Morris was very confident. You don't normally get a lot of emotions from Pete Salmon, but he was up in a heap. And so too, the dreaded index finger of Christopher Wright and that has paved the way for a fourth Red Force battle to depart. Gooley is not happy. I'm not sure about what. I'm not sure he's saying he didn't hit it or he played a faulty stroke. But what is for sure is that he has to depart. And the Scorpions, the spinners, I'm not sure. I can't tell. I think the most important person is Christopher Wright. 96 for 4. Gooley goes for 19. Caught at the wicket. Excellent delivery by Captain Pete. Someone pitch and spun away from the left-handed Gooley. An excellent take by Morris. Doing an excellent job behind the stump for the Scorpions this season. And continues to do well here at Spina Park. The Red Force at 96 for the loss of 4. Joshua the Silver makes his way to the middle. Player that emerged onto the scene in 2020. That's the international scene. 
played that series against November. Played that series against New Zealand in November of that year. I mean, the world was locked down, you would say, and lives were being changed. New Zealand, they were hosting the West Indies. And Shane Dorich didn't take part in that second game. Joshua Da Silva hit a 50 on debut in the second innings. And he hasn't looked back since. Well, of course, he made he scored an hundred against England. His first hundred came against England at the maiden century back in March of twenty twenty two. And he shared a fifty six run tenth wicket partnership with Jaden Seals to get to his hundred. Best of friends, they are forceful to me down with Kurt McKenzie. It's charging in, and for the first time for a long time in this season, the Scorpions are bouncing around. You can hear the cheers and the chants. He goes over me down. That's impressive. Imperious from the silver and shows his class early. And just to alleviate some of the pressure that is being built by the Scorpions bowlers. And with mid on in the circle, there was absolutely no chance. Even if he was at long on, it would have been a struggle. And the 100 comes up for the visitors, 100 for four. Shot of class by Captain De Silva. Showing his class. And he's a classy player indeed. Good to see him in charge. Of the Red Force team as well, getting some responsibilities. And as I mentioned, Foster from the tour of New Zealand, he haven't looked back, getting his opportunity at the test level. And of course, so far, he grabs it with both hands. And now he's the captain of the Red Force team and doing an outstanding job so far. Red Force in fifth in the table. Yeah, Django is gonna get that through the covers. Save your legs, Andre Dennis. No, he's quick enough. Yeah, he is. Well, he made a meal of it. That should be signaled as a boundary. Now there's a chance to run out at the striker's end. I think that should be a four, by the way, based on what happened with Dennis, because while he touched the ball, he was in contact with the boundary from my position. Let's look at it again. Yeah, that should be four. That should be four, but the umpires don't have a replay. Yeah, while he was sliding, while he sat on the ball, yeah, his left boot was actually touching the boundary. So that should be four, but he, it almost resulted in a wicket because Jangu wanted three. But all is well that ends well because that would have been seriously controversial had he been run out of what should be four runs. Well, of course, the silver made his domestic debut back in 2018, Foster. He made his debut for West Indies in December 2020. Played 65 first class games, scoring 3,194 runs at an average of 32.15. Tickled fine. That's going to take some stopping. I don't think anyone will. And that's another boundary for Joshua De Silva. 
A quick start for him, two boundaries. That one was a bad delivery from Royal. Hasn't bowled many today. I'm just using the depth of the crease there, Joshua the Silva. And tickled it into the boundary. 107 now for four, the Scorpions, the Red Force. And that's a thousand. Yeah, but the line again from Royal. It's his first time in this spell that he has not gotten his radar right. 108 for 4 after 35. So, someone, the standing captain. You look at Justice Silver at the test level, played 26 games, scored 992 runs at an average of 26.1. Yeah, so interesting feel for the silver here. But I don't think the feel will have anything to do with that bad delivery. There's a straightish mid on, and then there's a straightish mid wicket. And then there's a long on in place because he had popped one down the ground already. Well, forward. Quite an interesting feel set here for, for the silver. Three feelers on the offside. That's a slip mid off under cover. So there's no point. Repeat someone getting the ball to spin into the right handed the silver. So very, very positive. He looks as looked at a touch above everybody else was faced either someone or royal yeah that's too bad that's too bad pete someone that's too easy another boundary ball for joshua the silver that's his third yeah too short it was a real long hop it was so long he could even turn in the crease to hit it the silver and takes him up to 13. 112 for four. It's too easy from Pete Someone just train on the line of the leg stump. And easy pickings for the silver who picks up his third bungee of the contest so far. And he's up to 13. Potential threat of rain has seemed to be gone because it has the clouds have gotten a lot lighter. That's bad delivery again. Carlos Brown does well, does extremely well. Yeah, excellent work by Carlos Brown moving across the ground very quickly. Foster had to get down because again it was too short from someone. I don't had no interest in chasing that one Carlos Brown and that completes the 36 at 113 for the loss of four
Royal is continuing. The silver has 14 from 12, three boundaries. I think last year the Scorpions had the Red Force in a in a tricky situation. And it just exploded and got away from them. That's a delicate shot. Delicately played. A touch of class. And finesse. Takes the ball into the boundary. And Joshua De Silva is on the charge here. He's Looking to put pressure back onto the home team. That's his fourth boundary. He has 17. Showing great experience is the silver. Elegantly played. Just use the face. I should say the pace of that delivery. And guide it down to the vacant third boundary. Boundary for yet another boundary to him. His fourth. The red four is 117 now for loss of four. Here at Sabina Park. a little bit straighter from Royal who hasn't hit his heights of this morning where he was really accurate and cut away off the stumps again he loves that shot the silver and that tells you that he trusts the bones of the wicket as well yeah. well he just sees 17 deliveries and he's accustomed to the pace of the wicket so far. Leaves that one alone. That one had a little bit more pace on it from Royal. Let's see if he could defeat him, or deceive him. It's 117 for four. As I mentioned, I was saying to Marlon just know that last year, from my memories, that the Scorpions had Trinidad in a heap, really. I was just trying to remember the score. They were 118, 119 for seven. But guess what? The Red Force made 302. Terence Hines got 94. Yeah. He's in the 11 today, by the way. So it's a similar situation because they're now 117 for four. And this is a good change from the captain. I expected, expected, expected it to be a little bit earlier to see Andre McCarthy back because he was the best bowler in the first session, without doubt. Even with the wickets for Salmon and Royal at the back end of the session. His lines and his lengths were decent. Picked up the wicket off Cooper this morning. It was caught by wicket keeper Morris. It is good to see him getting a game this year in his Westerns Regional Championship. It's the final game though, Foster. Yeah, it's something for him to build on. You don't want to play a game this year for Jamaica and then the start of next season you're not even in the consideration of the selectors you have to ensure that you build on what you have started Andre McCarthy is back to Django and based on what I'm seeing from McCarthy he's shown that he's committed to this cricket here for the Scorpions works very hard on this game Tends to stay here at Sabina Park to do his training. I remember he lives way in St. Elizabeth. So tell us it all about the man. Always see him here at Sabina Park putting in the extra work. And now it's a speed off. Well, 
What has paid off there for Django is that he has gotten something short and wide and he's cashed in on it. And it crashes into the boundary now. Takes the score up to 121 for four. That was too short and way too wide. That's easy pickings. Yes, of course, too easy for Django. He won't miss out on that. And a poor delivery by Andre McCarthy. We want to be a bit fuller and about that food stump area. Two slip and a goalie waiting. That's not the sort of delivery you want to bowl to Django, a man in terrific form so far, coming off a double century as well. They were mentioning McCarthy staying here. Um, for those who are not familiar with Jamaica, St. Elizabeth is one of the western parishes. Kingston is technically in the east. <laughs> so <laughs> for him to travel, it would be around two and a half hours. Three hours to get home. So it's understandable why he stays. After a training session and yeah. then back for the next day. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Very hectic for him. But I guess the sacrifice that he has made has really come through now because, because pays dividend for the young man. Much better line since that boundary. And he started from this the Courtney Watch and this morning as we picked up the wicket. And now of course he's bowling from the Michael Olin end. driven again pleasantly again it's gonna take some stopping this one will not get to the boundary i don't think andre dennis flicks it back and three runs added to the total it's 124 for four to complete the 38th over yes over pitch delivery jangu came on the front foot short that ball elegantly through the covers and great commitment being shown there by Angie Dennis stops a single at one two four for loss of four. If you're just joining us, the Scorpions they won the toss this morning and elected to field first, captain in the Scorpions for the first time this season. He speeds someone, Brandon King carrying a needle injury, so he's out. And so far, so good. Pete Summon doing a fabulous job so far. So far, Marshall, the tubes on the ground. And this is what you want to see. Your leaders leading from the front, marching in the tubes. And so far, Pete Summon doing just that for the Scorpions. Four wickets lost by the Red Force. Two to that man, Pete Someone as well. Had to his tally for over 30 yard wicket this season. A load appeal this time. Not interested is Joel Wilson. Look at the replay here. Just pitching outside the line of the Arsenal. Excellent call by Joel Wilson. Yeah, he was spinning down the leg side as well. He got outside the line as well. Django. Was looking to hit that one through the onside. Advancing. Ensure that he covered the line of the ball. Royal was asking questions there. How straight was it? Is it going on to hit the stumps? But I said no. This time is a quicker one through the air, Foster. Yeah, it's 
the game of cat and mouse now because Django senses that he can also up the ante and put pressure on the bowlers similar to what the Silva is doing. Hasn't faced for a while now, Joshua the Silva. And this is where the, the Scorpions have to be mindful that as much as they are attacking, they still have to be containing to pick up wickets, build pressure. Realize Royal getting the ball to spin into the left hander. I think a leg slip could be a possibility for Pete Summon as well. I think what they want to do is put pressure on Django to play that sweep shot and ensure that he's in total control of the sweep shot. That's the 125th run for the Red Force. They are 125 for four at the end of the 39. And he realized two feelers out for the shot as well. A deep backward square and also a deep mid wicket. So that's a risk you take as a batter. And McCarthy will be continuing. One for 11 so far into his seventh over. On debut for the Scorpions is McCarthy, one of three debutants in the Scorpions team today. Andre Tennis, and of course, Justin Beckford, three debutant in the Scorpions lineup today for this seventh round action from Sabina Park. Yeah, that's a top shot. Overpitched. And the form that Amir Django is in makes it very easy for him to get it backward of point. Basically jumped down on it, but it was guided, opening up the blade and opening up those wrists and getting it into the gap. Another boundary for the left hander. Tremendous shot there from Django. Full pitch delivery outside the off stump. Easy pickings for Django. I tell you what, I think 33 run partnership from 35 deliveries, very quick indeed. I think McCarthy should be looking to pull back that lane faster. Gonna have those moments. Not an excuse, but he's very new to this level. And it gets harder the more you play because the, the levels increase. You get to the higher levels, it's going to get even harder. I think what is good for him is that he made his first class debut here at Sabina Park at home. He's going to change his mode of operation here. He's going to go over the wicket. So the movement that we saw earlier with McCarthy where the ball was coming back towards the stumps especially to the left hand and away from the right hand has gone. It's now about being consistent on those lines and lengths. And now Christopher Wright seemed to be telling McCarthy that he's running in the danger zone. Yeah, he tends to get pretty close to the to the umpire. You see that umpire right is still having some issues. And he's communicating now to Captain Pete Salmon that he's warning McCarthy to get off the wicket. So that looks like the first official warning. And if we could get another shot of it, well after this delivery. He's round the wicket now. And that means he's going wider and wider away from the area. <laughs> you realize yeah. that final delivery, he was on the other pitch. Yeah. <laughs> 
so there's a slight adjustment we made in the field the backward square leg goes on the boundary This was the yeah, going back to that delivery that caused the problem for McCarthy. Got him warned. Let's see how many steps did he really take into that area? Well, Daniel Bickford is on the field. Yeah, he was right in front. Oh, that was bad. He was going right down the middle of the wicket. short delivery he didn't look comfortable in the outset there Django but he got control of it 130 for four and he's up to 26 now good delivery there coming in from McCarthy realize the substitute feeler is on the field Daniel Beckford is on for Carlos Brown. Strapoy Royal will be continuing. Earlier, there was shut off showers, Foster. But now it's a beautiful day at Spina Park for cricket. Beautiful skies as well. Lovely, lovely condition for cricket. So we realize two feelers out on the onside for Jangu. Twenty six from forty two deliveries to his name. Look very positive so far. Looks to capitalize on any loose delivery that presents itself. Good deliveries like that. He's willing to negotiate. 130 for four. The Red Force of the Lost the Toss this morning. And we're sent into bat by the Scorpions. Oh, there it goes. Through that leg gully region, leg slip. Reaching for the ball there, Django. I said it has been some time now since Joshua De Silva has faced the delivery. He's going to be facing now. Hasn't faced for the last three overs. Change in the field here. There's a deep backward square going in place. Man who is bowling his spell has to be running all that distance. Oh, that was bad. Badly lined. The wiki keeper couldn't stop it. And that's four buys. Not what the Scorpions would want at this stage of the game. Doing well so far. Just a slight error there from Javoy Royal. Hasn't been the same since launch Royal. His figures look economical, but he hasn't been threatening. Has leaked some easy runs. I'm gonna wonder how long you're gonna wait to see Abhijay Man Singh into the attack. Waited 50 overs in the last game. Maybe waited too late. Well, that it's completes all the 41st at 135 for four.
So, only two overs break for Pete Salmon. He's now reintroduced himself into the attack. Has bowled all his overs from the Michael holding end. And Andre McCarthy replaced. And McCarthy got his success from the Courtney Walsh end. And by, as I mentioned, Courtney Walsh, he was today appointed as consultant for the Zimbabwe women's team. Jamaica and West Indies fast bowling great. First fast bowler to get to 500 test wickets. Never forget that celebration. It's someone to Django that was slow. So slow that it almost spun twice. I think he got that 500 wicket against Zimbabwe. Yeah. Spun right across Django. Oh, coincidental. Missed out on that one, Jangu. That should have been dispatched. Seeing the same signs like the previous game where the Scorpions had a stronger hold on proceedings and then it just got loose for an hour and they just weren't able to claw their way back into the game. And they, from their, for their sake, they'll be hoping that it, it, is, it isn't a repeat of itself. And Pete someone just realizing that the game was meandering away and has put himself back on. Takes the edge. Brown does some feeling. Almost created some chaos. That's what positive feeling does. Nimble movement, nimble footwork. Almost created in a mix-up. Or resulted in a mix-up. Yeah, I like the approach of Carlos Brown in the field. Setting the example. Leading from the front is Carlos Brown. And that's a fight and the urge you want to see from your feelers in the field and so far so good by Carlos Brown and this partnership believe it or not it's worth 40 41 the last time I checked and that completes well, it, would be 40, it would be 40 runs no because it, the wicket was at 96 so our score has got it wrong there so it's 40 runs Well, after 42 overs, it's 136 for four. Coming up to the first hour after lunch. Javoy Royal. So, yeah, the partnership is 40. It, is, it has come in quick time. Scorpion still trying to find the ideal field placements here. Someone has seen enough with the pace and said that let's go back to spin. He's not, he's not gonna do much with the ball here. Not much pace off the wicket to trouble Jangu or Da Silva. And it has been very slow off the surface in this session. <laughs> you realize overs have been going very quickly here as well. 42 overs bowled so far in the game in quick time yeah, <laughs> trying too hard here Javor Roy I just needs to do what has been working for him one thing for sure Pete someone's match fee should be okay <laughs> definitely that was a very good take by the wiki keeper outstanding work down the leg side never easy
couple of balls have gone to the boundary for buys. He really and truly couldn't do much about them. And if you realize how oh, the Red Force cut the run so far faster, bad deliveries. Yeah, a lot and of they... short deliveries outside the off stump, similar to the last game. There is that delivery that is spinning back towards the stumps and potentially harmful, but dealt with easily by Jangu, who goes up to 29 at a 137 for four. And so far, look very good at the wicket is Jangu. Been in terrific form this season as well. Had a quiet, quiet first two rounds, and then third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. He really took took off, and that sixth round got a double century. That tells the old mark of the man Jangu. Can probably do away with that shot. Maybe he was sweeping on line, but it looked a little bit too full for that shot. Very good single. Very good running between the wickets. Dennis was a little bit deep on the onside. Saw that Django sprung off, say, almost as he hit it. And that's what I'm seeing the Red Force team. They are playing basic cricket so far. When the singles presents itself, they take it. And when the bad ball presents itself, they capitalize. And that's a whole trademark of cricket as well as a batter. They want to be precise with the running and as well. And so far, they are doing, doing just that at the moment, the Red Force. Probably want to go over that delivery some more. The silver was in the air for a while. Was reaching for it. Yeah. Just allow it to come to him a little bit more. Pete is, well, someone is a very canny bowler. Have to be careful. Turns that one into the onside this time. That was too short. For his 19th run. The red force slowly but surely inches up, up closer to that 150 mark. David Dewar from Excelsior. His team, his school are into the final of the Urban Area T20. They just defeated St. George's College. I think that's in the... In double to no time. 139 for four after 44. I think that's the nephew of Akim Duar as well. Former Jamaica and West Indies under 19 player. Just... Some updates from around the ground. Remember that these two teams here at Sabina Park, they can't win the West Indies Championship unless something miraculously happens in Trinidad and, cool, and at Coolidge. And at the moment, Guyana Harpy Eagles, they're on their way to doing great things against the combined campuses and colleges. The CCC 171 for nine. Brilliantly played. Pierce the gap to perfection. There's a long chase for Buchanan. Can he stop it? Yes, he can. But what he can't stop is three runs. That was a top shot. Waited on that one, Joshua the Silver. Played it late and carved it backward of point for three. That's a class of the man. The Silver. Tremendous timing as well. An excellent work by Javon Buchanan. 
playing his second game of the season as well, showing great commitment. So the Volcanoes, who started the round as the leaders, they had reduced the, the Hurricanes to 63 for three. The Hurricanes have recovered. They are 197 for four. The tournament's leading scorer, Mikhail Louis, has 57. He's really batted himself into the minds of, of this, the stakeholders who are selecting these squads. And Barbados Pride, they are in trouble against the West Indies Academy. They, made, they are 144 for eight. And that could bring music to the ear of the Guyana Harpy Eagles, as well as the Volcanoes and the Hurricanes, just in case the Academy can pull off what would easily be their best win of the season. They did defeat the Hurricanes in the first round. Don't forget the Academy. But who's to tell there? really putting Barbados under pressure. The academy team has a lot of Barbadians as well. <laughs> this time a loose looking shot here by Jangu to complete the 45th at 142 for the loss of four. someone into his 16th racking up the overs never ever too short on doing that so after a very quick start uh, Joshua De Silva He scored four of his last ten deliveries. But he's in no hurry. He knows he has a lot of time. Look very compact at the wicket thus far. Unbuttered. Easy in the eye. Yeah, the communication has gotten better between the two. Easy single. And you're surprised that someone only gave McCarthy two overs from the the Michael holding any that spell? Not at all. He realized McCarthy was struggling from the Michael holding end. It was special from this or commentary box end. Since he, he went from the Michael Oli, then it was up and down, a bit wide outside the off stump on a few occasions, and he was pulling through the offside. That I think is going to be drinks, or if the umpires are interested, they are. At 143 for four, the TNT Red Force. They have added some 58 runs in this session. The Scorpions found a way to pick up a wicket. So you can join us in a short time for more action here from Savannah Park.
So you rejoin us here at Sabina Park with the Red Force marching on. 143 for 4. They were sent in to bat. And they lost the wicket, the wicket of Sifa Scooper early. Took the Scorpions a long time to get the other wickets at 83. And those were Kishore Otley who went tamely at caught a short cover. So soft. And then Jason Mohammed LBW to Javor Royal. Those wickets fell before lunch. And in the first half an hour after lunch, Pete Salmon got the wicket of Jit Gouli from West Indies on the 19, winning battle. He was caught at the wicket by Romain Morris. Abhijay Mansingh has the ball in hand. First time in the contest into over number 47. Took him 50 overs to get the ball in the last game, not far off. And you can understand why he's a wrist spinner. It's going to be harder for him to grip a newer, deliver, a newer ball. And umpire Wilson already showing that he has some issues with where Mansingh is landing. Asking him please to get off the area. That's going to be four. Full toss. And that long reach from the silver got him closer and closer to the ball. It turned into a full toss. And the right hander elegantly placed it to the right of mid wicket. And those are going to be easy runs. Pure timing by De Silva. Didn't try to overheat it, Foster. Just tried to pick the gap. And he picked the gap perfectly well for yet another bungee to the Red Force captain. Moved on nicely. The 50-run partnership is up. 51 runs added between the pair. It has come in a very brisk manner. Rapid pace, I would say. Manching is very good. Yeah, 51 from 81. That's, that's good batting. That's a good tempo. And doing nothing silly, Foster. And that completes the 47. At 147 for a loss of four. Closer and closer to a century. It's now tea time in those games in the Eastern Caribbean. Michael Louis, the brother of Jeremiah Louis. Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 200 for four. What a wonderful feeling it must have been to see two brothers playing for the same team at the regional level. He has 94, and Joel Andrew, who made that splendid century in the under-19 World Cup against South Africa, he has 56. And those two are carrying the hopes of the Hurricanes. Another change in the fee from someone not happy with the, the short leg. He has now moved him to silly point. Justin Beck for the debutant. There's no man deep on the offside. There's only one person deep. And that's a deep backward square. Mid off is not really in a regular mid off position, but he's walking in. And Beckford is not really staying down. <laughs> was it hurt? He was it earlier. <laughs> Seems like he's not accustomed to that feeling position as well. gotten deeper and deeper by the ball <laughs> so, out the half of the bat and he's a, a wicked keeper as well 
remember him playing schoolboy cricket and see him keeping for Woolmers as well. Sweep shot, got on top of the bounce. Out to deep back at square. Andre McCarthy does the feeling and only a single. One four eight for four at Sabina Park. The Scorpions they won the toss this morning. And ask the Red Force to take first strike. And so far so good. Scorpions picked up four early wickets. And a wonderful partnership between Captain De Silva and Janggu. 50 had a run so far. Really doing an outstanding job for the Red Force at the completion of the 48. 148 for loss of four. Abhi J. Mansing not at his best this season with the ball, but had some wonderful contribution with the bat. We want to break this partnership as quickly as possible. Really a blossom at the moment. Over 50 had run so far. And if you look at the West Indies Regional Championship for 2024 for Justice Silva, I think he missed the first game and the second. But haven't been with any significant runs with the bat for the Red Force team or they want to make a mark in this the final game of the West Indies Regional Championship for 2024. Nice spin there from Man Singh. Realize Changu is trying to back away to create space and that ball spun back very sharp into the left-handed Jangu. no harm done though the red force so far settling down at the wicket and these two in the middle Did an outstanding job so far That's brilliantly driven. Javor Royal has to come around. Does well. Can't stop two. That was good work from Royal as well because it was going to his right. But it was well placed by Amir Jango. He takes the red force up to 150. 150 now for four. And this partnership is beginning to be a problem for the home team. It's now 54. And he realized he didn't try to over eat that ball. I kept mentioning Foster. He haven't seen any bad shot so far by the Red Force team. Any rush of blood in this partnership in particular. They are waiting on the bad deliveries. And hence why this partnership is blossoming so far. We're at 54 and a 54 valuable runs to them as well. And that one almost sneaked under the bat. Which is in such good form. And he's able to deal with it Amir Django is 150 for four at the end of the 49. Not a bad over there by Abhijay Mansing. Just trying to get into his groove. And if you look around in the Scorpions team to D a lot of inexperienced players in the team today. When I look at that three, David and 
a Royal who is playing his second game. But Cannon playing his second game. Well, it's his third. Well, for Royal, it will be more than one game. Yeah, his second game this season. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's, the thing is, when you have an inexperienced bowling attack, the best way to put pressure on them is to attack them. And they, you get them to err in their lines and their lengths. Gonna call on them to do more. And that is where the ball is gonna be sprayed around. And even though someone is in is in charge today, he has only been playing regional cricket. This is only his first full season of regional cricket. <laughs> That's where. The lies comes into play. Inexperienced Scorpions team at the moment. Doing a wonderful job, I would say. Overrate, very good. Taking their opportunities. You can see the urge, the commitment. And this is what you want to see from the Scorpions in regional cricket. It's good to see coach Andy Richardson giving the youngsters the opportunity that completes over number 50 at 150 for loss of four. J. Mansing will be continuing to Jangu, who's on 33. With him is Captain De Silva. <laughs> Some theatrics there from Jangu. And also from J. Mansing as well. Tenting him and asking him to throw. Both good friends as well, Foster. No shot in anger played against Mansing as yet. Has been controlled from him so far. He hasn't really given away a lot of bad deliveries. He has been driven through the covers. But not many loose deliveries. Well, that one spun away. That's some poor work from McCarthy. Didn't read the spin. It's always going to go backward. And it spun past him and it goes into the boundary. Yeah, it has to go to his right. It's always going to spin to your right. It goes into the boundary. That's a mistake. 154 for four. That's not what Haviji Mansing would want of his bowling. And at this level, this is poor from Angie McCarthy as well. And I think he can do better, Foster. Yeah, he's a much better fielder than that. Indeed, I saw him in the outfield doing great work. Oh, this occasion, he was just sloppy. And it's now, the ball is now pinging towards him. And as you saw there, much better fielding. Got his body in the way. Yeah, excellent work this time around. And as I mentioned, he's a much better feeling than the arrow at backward point.
cut away. No man moved, no man got hurt. It's rushing into the Kingston Cricket Club. That was too short, too wide. And as soon as I said Man Singh had more control, a couple of loose ones. Well, you'd say a real loose one there. And Jangu has feasted on it. He's up to 41 from 82. And the Red Force 158 for four. Joshua the Silver has 27 in a partnership that is valued at 62. A glorious shot there from Jangu. This time around, poor delivery. From RPG Mansing, short, wide. It was begging to be hit. And Jangu did oblige. Floor, glorious shot to his name. And he's up to 41 from 82 deliveries. And a magnificent partnership, fifth wicket partnership of over 64 runs between these two in the middle. Good delivery. Chief away from the right handed. The silver. Excellent delivery there from Pete Someone. It's always that one big partnership in an innings that can break a team. I think Django and the silver has realized that they, this partnership can be it. Someone has been tidy, hasn't given away much, but I don't think there has been much threat. Oh yeah, they get one. That was well placed by the silver, takes him up to 28. Excellent cricket here by the silver. Got to the pitch of that ball and didn't try to overheat it. Just gracefully showed that ball down to long on. For yet another single to his total and also to the red for his total. Showing experience in the middle. He realized he must make his way to the middle. Different cricket from the red for his team. Showing all his class in the middle is the silver. But this man, Jangu, has been special for the Red Force this season. Yeah, that should be the end of the over, I think. Yeah, it should be. Based on our calculations. Uh, the umpire has another one. Well, mm. that is it now. So it's 159 for four, a partnership of 63, Jango 41, Joshua De Silva 28. That last delivery from Pete Summon spun sharply away from the left handed Jango. You can see how wicked keeper Morris took that ball. He realized there's a lot of spin in the wicked Foster. Happy J. Mansing, none for 14 into his foot over. Yeah, I know that, I know that Pete Salmon gave McCarthy two overs previously, but it's time for him to, to probably go back to his fastest bowler. He hasn't bowled this session. He's only bowled a, a couple of overs all day. Has to be time to get back to O.J. Shields. Man Singh is going to be continuing. What a brilliant shot. There's long off and there's mid on. And neither of them will catch it. That's a terrific shot from Joshua De Silva. It was just pure timing. And just presented the full face of the bat on the ball. And it raced across the Sabina Park outfield. That's a class of the man, De Silva. Pure timing. 
full face of the back being presented. Shot of claw and shot of authority by the silver. And that is seven boundary foster. Reaching for that one. I was slower in the air from Man Singh. Made it more difficult. Then it has gone straighter. That's another bad delivery. But only one run. It's now 164 for four. The partnership has swollen to 68. And as I kept mentioning, all bad deliveries and they are quick to capitalize. No rush shot so far by the two butters in the middle. And this is what you want to see at the regional level. Butters applying themselves on the wicket. And so far, just the silver and Jangu doing an outstanding job. For the Red Force. Yeah, another over completed by Mansing. No threat. It's 164 for four. Seem like we're gonna have a change from the Michael Lowland end of the ground. OJ Shields started from this uh, the Courtney Walsh end, that's a commentary box end. And now he'll be bowling from the Michael Lowland end. That's if you're familiar with Sapina Park, that's the George Edliston end. He'll be bowling to Josh De Silva, who is unbeaten on 33 from 52 deliveries, and Jangu on 41 from 86 delivery. And Broughton, fifth wicket partnership, over 60 runs so far. Interesting to see what the field will be. It started out to be two slips. It has changed to a slip on a gully. No pace in this wicket. There's a backward point, cover, mid-off. Straightish mid-wicket and mid-on. There's also a deep backward square under fine leg. And Shields will have to reload because that's a no wall. That was, I would assume, that was called. On the front foot by the umpire right. And it's clearly OJ Shields will be target just the silver with some short pitch deliveries as well. It's the backward square leg is on the boundary. And so too is long leg. Silver not happy with that shot. I 
think Shields has to be using his pace to see if he can really target the stumps and just get the batters playing 40 shots. I don't think that length previously is going to be any problem for the silver. Uh, tucking him up there, but dealt with it for a single, 166 for four. You want him to be zoning in on that middle and off stump line, on the top of off stump line, just force the batters to play him. There's a slip and there's a gully. As you said, not much pace in the wicket. Just hoping to create some, some problems. Well, here we're bowling to Jang in this occasion. Is OJ Shields with a slip, a goalie, a backward point. A mid off and a cover on the onside. On the offside, I should say. Pull away, Jebo Royal. Watch out. It's gone all the way for six. And that tells you about the lack of pace in the wicket. He almost spun three times before he hit the ball. It was so slow. It sat up. For Django and dispatched it with this Dane all the way for six. And the score goes up now to 172 for four. Django edging closer to a half century as 47. Shot of a 30 there by Django. It was shot, it was begging to be hit. And my word, did he oblige? It's a big shot over deep back with square leg for a humongous hit. That's over with see St. George's College. Big shot coming in from. The steady left hander, John Gu. Has to be on the stumps. It's obvious that uh, the pace hasn't really been there. Good to be fast. I think asking batters. To protect their stumps is the hardest thing to do in cricket. Oh no! Balloons this one over Midon, but got enough bat on it. For a second, I thought Jangu was in trouble. And he has a celebration for his half century. He says, Inject me with some more of these. I'm <laughs> gonna get more runs. And he has brought up a half century to follow up on, on his double century from the previous round 51. For Jango, 176 for the Red Force. Congratulations to the man, Jango. Well deserved as well. Batted with class, with courage as well. 88 ball for his 51 runs. Batted an unbroken partnership so far. Over 70 other runs. Excellent by the man. Well uh, the partnership is now 80. From 124, Django has 41 of them. And he's batted solidly, 89 deliveries faced. Pull again, there's Royal, that's poor. He really gave it away. There was no other way for the Scorpions to get a wicket but for the Red Force to throw it away. And that's exactly what Django has done. Testing him with that short delivery. And the ball just ballooned out to Javor Royal. Safe pair of hands. And the most comfortable of catches you will see. 176 of 5. And the Scorpions, they can fight on again as an opening has been created. Amir Django goes to 51. It's the first wicket for OJ Shields.
So the new man at the crease. To replace Amir Jango is Bidesi. Yeah, that's uh, Navin Bidesi coming in. Good afternoon, viewers, wherever you're tuning in from. Unfortunate wicket there for the uh, Red Force. Yeah. They had built a nice partnership there with um, Josh De Silva. And there was a good little battle between Pete Salmon and Joshua Silva, the captain versus captain, when Salmon was bowling. RBJ Mansing to continue. Look positive since coming to the crease. They have to rebuild now. Another critical strike for the Scorpions. And well played by the Silva down the ground. Takes him off to 35. And it has been easy street so far for him he hasn't really played a shot in anger really no chances offered and he has just played each delivery on its merit he put the scorpions bowlers on the back foot when he just arrived just to send a signal that we're not going to be consuming too much pressure we're going to ensure that you guys know it's a contest and the partnership yeah, I uh, I think I'm disappointed with Django, however, because his 51 was a was a fairly chanceless inning. That was a lovely innings as well, and uh, it would have been good for him to get a century on back on the back of his double century. That would really make his name stand out for the selectors. Yeah, it has to show hunger and desire and score more runs because Mikhail Louis has scored his third century yeah. of the season. That's someone who has a desire to go higher places well yeah because if you look at if you look at Django's career I mean he's been around for some time but it's, it's sort of this has really been his breakout season it's been years that he's been around yeah. and Navid Bidesi faced his first delivery just now and of course uh, one of the many talented wicket keeper batsmen around as, as well I mean he's been around he made his debut in uh, 2015 which is well I'll confirm his first class career results his in terms of that 2016-2017 so he's been around a while he's 97 he's, so he's 26 years old born in 1997 so he's uh, 26 years old <coughs> And that was his first centuries as well. So, I mean, if you think, if you think he's played 30 first-class matches at the end of the over and, and finally scored a, a double century and, and to get off the mark in terms of his centuries, but just the, the blooming is a little too, too late, late for him. For your liking, yeah. Yeah. Not too late for him, obviously, and I, I, all the best to him as, as he maybe pushes to, put, to go on to the higher level. Because in terms of West Indies cricket, you think that Joshua Silva could be promoted up the order, uh, and then if he could still do the keeping job, and then if Django comes in, and he can do the keeping job as well, or even Romain Morris, who's done quite well. Yeah, it's gonna take more than just a one-off century to prove Dota's wrong. You have to score centuries consistently and at a high volume as well. You have to do. So that knock alone was his uh, 
maiden first class century and he turned it into a season leading 218 um, and he's fourth on the run scores list in the competition with an aggregate of 449 this is Ami Jangu um, and he said before this knock he had a couple 90s four or five 90s he said and he says he has said his primary goal is to play test cricket if you want to play test cricket I don't think falling for the hook shot on a third attempt is uh, is showing your true class and caliber, especially on a flat deck with little to no pace in it. But I guess the shields effect is a fast bowler steaming in. You want to show that you are better than him, and you can play whatever he serves up. But as uh, well, I did call for shields to be put into the attack. Yeah, but it's it's all about battles and wars, isn't it? I mean, if you've already hit him for two fours in the over, you brought up your 50, why go for a third one? You've already gotten eight runs off the over. Or no, I lie, one was a six, so you got ten runs off the over. Yeah. And the second one was a bit... And, the, and that's the thing, the second one was a bit lucky because that one kind of sort of bo yeah. ballooned over him at all. He didn't, he didn't control it. Didn't yeah. He? The first one was sweet. got onto him quicker yeah. than he thought. Yeah. For a second, I thought it was in the air because I actually said, oh no, because he gave it away. I thought he gave it away. Well, he eventually gave it away. See, you get an opportunity and it gets you to 50 and then you get out the ball after or, sec or ball the, the delivery or two after. I think I've I appreciate what Pete Salmon has done so far today. He's shown that he's thinking about the situation. And your thoughts on the fielding, Fozzy? Because I, I commented that at least in the first session they were, they were quite tight. I've seen a couple of misfields from the Jamaicans. Yeah, no drop chances well, that's good. to date. And that should be music to the ear of the head coach. Well played by the Bidesi. I think that one came in just a little bit. Opportunity for him here, Navin Bidesi, a young fellow, just making his way in the game as well. And then hopefully Josh De Silva can hang around. Hasn't had a fantastic season, Josh. I think he's had a couple 60s or 70s. He had a critical one to, yeah. to, to win one of the rounds, one of the matches in the earlier rounds in a chase. Still in a decent position, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, even though you might say their tail is a bit long. In terms of the batting to come, Brian Charles can hold up at end, as well as Terence Hines, a, a bit of an all-rounder. Carrie Pear, I would uh, class in the same sort of field, maybe not as adept as Hines and uh, Charles. And then, of course, Anderson Phillip. He made some runs against the Scorpions last year. Yeah. So he yeah, might not fancying yeah. his chances again. Unfortunately, the, the tail and the <laughs> character has sort of gone out of cricket. That's too wide. And the umpire is outstretched his arms for a wide to be called. So I think Jamaica probably has the honor of producing the greatest tail ender ever, whose name bears one end of the ground, even though he's not well that famous for his tail ending. And that's, of course, Courtney Walsh. Genuine tail ender, if there ever was one. And, of course, one of the hardest working fast bowlers you'll ever see. Pleasant good afternoon to Mr. Walsh, if you're listening. And we share a middle name. Andrew. His middle name is Andrew, and of course, my name is Andrew. Well, I think the Scorpions are just searching for another wicket here. I don't know if they're searching for a middle name wicket. They just need a wicket. Yeah, that's too easy for Bidesi. End of the over, 179 for five. I actually suggest bringing back... Uh, McCarthy and uh, letting him bowl at the silver. See how he is with the old ball. Maybe some swinging away might uh, might bother. 
Well, he, well, he, Trinidad and Tobago Red he gave him a couple of overs prior to Shields summer, but he wasn't happy with what he was doing. So um, maybe could try him again. But Man Singh is going to be continuing. I think they want to go spin and pace the Scorpions. It's a good option. If the pitch isn't offering anything, then... Uh, and with the pace that they're bowling their overs, the new ball is going to be due later today. There, I misfeel it. As you asked about the feeling, you got something to grade. Yeah, but Josh De Silva would have felt like he missed out there. Not often Abby J. Mansing offers a freebie. But they see yet to get off the mark. Looks solid so far. Very compact. Of course, there's other action going around in the uh, Cricket West Indies Regional 4-Day Championship. This is, of course, round 7. So, the Barbados Pride have been bowled out to 153 against the Academy, who are 14 for 1. Leeward Islands doing very well. They've recovered nicely, 217 for 5 against the Winwoods. Yeah, that was too long. And crashed away over mid-wicket. He was just searching for something off color, off length. And Bidesi just hammers that. Easy hitting. Yeah, lovely shot. Just rocked back there nicely. Picked his spot. Good placement. And the combined campuses and colleges against the Guyana Harp Eagles have been bowled out for 200 there. It's moral be victory. Runs. Yeah, one yeah more. but a moral victory there for Man Singh. Three wickets for Virasami Permol. Three for Niall Smith as well. No surprises. The Virasami Permol is in the wickets. No, oh, not at all. If you had Virasami Pomal in your lineup, wouldn't you have him open the bowling as well? <laughs> Especially at this level. But I think Guyana, they are hunting for those fast bowling points yeah. to maximize their potential from the game. Ooh, dangerous stuff there. Bubbled a little bit. Joshua De Silva had to keep a close eye on his stumps at the end of the 57th. 185 for five. Barbados Pride, they were bowled out for 153. Uh, Johan Lane taking three wickets. McKenny Clark taking three as well. So that's a good, uh, that's a good effort there by the West Indies Academy. It'll be funny if they have a say in who reclaims the title. And I think it, 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 it'll be worth it for them as well. Because uh, they really have been a fighting team, the West Indies Academy. Of course, they're young fellows. So to see them performing at this level. Your good friend, Mikhail Louis, 93 not out. He's battling there. And Jewel Andrew, 51 off 70. Could be the brightest jewel in West Indies cricket. OJ Shields, continuing. Scorpions are their over rate has been good. It has been fantastic, really. Yeah, they've used your spinners quite well. 
they are on course to finish before five o'clock at this at this rate. <laughs> Ozzy clearly has a party to get to, so he's had some words with the Jamaica Scorpions management. <laughs> Or are you just a casual observer, yeah. Ozzy? A casual observer? I'm just an observer. I'm just an observer. For all you Jamaicans out there, Fuzzy is the observer. <laughs> Must be interesting. I mean, uh, I mean, the media work is always a uh, a fun job, Fuzzy. No ball there from Shields. You can see that he's working up a good head of steam here. They see had to had some discomfort in playing the, that delivery. Wasn't comfortable where he was. Mm. I guess my eyes are fooling me. He worked that one into the onside, but there was pace on that delivery. Yeah. So of course, uh, Jamaica. Jamaica is famed for its sports and. Uh, and athletics prowess, especially in the track and field department. So I, I wondered what it's like, Fuzzy, as I have you here. What, what is the, the Champ Sports like event? Because give, it, give, give the viewers a perspective as uh, after this delivery. Nice to play it by Bidesi. Yeah. He'll run that down to third man for four. That was delicate there. Good effort by the fielder, but there was nothing that he could do. That was just well timed and well placed. Nothing that ball is doing as well. It really sat up for the left-hander, diminutive. And Justin Beckford put in a very good effort. Just going to stop. It was so well-timed, so well-placed. Yeah. 190, now for five. Uh, yeah, champs is something that you have to be there to really understand the magnitude of it. I, t I tell the viewers what it's, champs is because, I mean, I know that's what a, it is. the track and field. High school track and field championship here in Jamaica. It's the largest track and field event in the English speaking Caribbean. High school, that is. I think it's in the Western and the Hemisphere. Western Hemisphere, too. In the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. so it's just, it's just a different level of competitiveness, energy, um, spectator support, um, <laughs> the hours. The fierceness in battle is just something that you have to be there. The energy of the, st of, the, of the fans, the energy of the athletes, and the high quality of the performances. As I said, you had student athletes running sub-10 for, for a boy that's under 19. He has set, it, set the stage now where someone running 10.4 is, is almost frowned upon. At 18 years old. Mm -hmm. That's what 9.9 .9 has done. Why this man running yeah. our reverse? Yeah. And 10.4 is not, is not slow by any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. for someone that is 17 or 18. But just the bar that has been set and even had an under 19 girl running 10.9. Yeah, well, according, according to our good friend from Weeper, he told me that they train on grass. So when they, when they hit that, that truck, Oh, feeling for that one. And shaped it takes place the at the office, minute. of course. Yeah. That one shaped away at the last minute from Shields yeah. from around the wicket. Yeah. Just a little bit. You saw the movement there to the wicket keeper, yeah. Yeah, so it takes place at the office, correct? The National Stadium, yeah. yeah. Which it's, is known well, as it's, it's an office for football. Uh, it's the office for football. Well, I don't even think it's the office anymore because we're losing there regularly now, so it doesn't really matter. No. Yeah, the National Stadium. That's a couple of minutes away from here. Not in the same area. But in terms of schools, I mean, of course, it, 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 has, it has an amazing atmosphere because it's schools, it's very uh, it partial viewers and, uh, and interesting. And at 190 for five after 58, are there any particular schools that stand out in track and field? that are always on top of the game in terms of always shining? Yeah, not many schools have won boys' championships. 
I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but in the early days, you had some of the schools in the western side of the country, like Cornwall College, Monroe College. They won, they won most of the championships when it just started. But Kingston College, they have the most titles. You have Jamaica College, and you have Calabar. Wilmer's Boys, they have a few, not many. But Kingston College, Calabar, and Jamaica College are the standout schools. They're the winningest schools. They dominate the boys' side. And for the girls, um, that's Back into his crease. Pulls this one nicely through mid-wicket. That was lovely from uh, Joshua Silva. And they'll have to fetch that ball from in front, the Kingston Cricket Club. Yeah, too short. A very long delivery. Asked to be hit. And was severely dealt with by the Silva. Had so much time, he could have picked where he wanted to hit it. And he chose the mid-wicket region. 194 now for five. And over 100 runs added in the session. Two wickets down, but I don't think the Red Force would mind. Yeah, so early years, Veer Technical won so many titles on the trot. That school is located in Clarendon. The cricket from the Red Force captain. And the West Indies first choice keeper. Yeah. But in recent times, Edwin Allen has been the dominant school. Had home with technical in the mid 2000s, and then Edwin Allen. Heidel broke, I think, eight years straight, rain on it, and then Edwin Allen reclaimed it this year. But it's just a fascinating spectacle. It's a lot of hard work as well if you're working there. Well, I'll expect my ticket from you next year, Fozzy. I know you have the links, the connections. I caught a look at Fozzy's phone earlier in his gallery, and he had a whole folder for QR codes for scans into parties and fets and other sorts. I think that's virtually impossible. <laughs> I think you're going to have one more over before tea. It's been another great session of cricket. Good battle between bat and ball. Red Force would feel as if they have won this session. Yeah, I would, I would say honors even in the first session. This session maybe Trinidad and a little bit more joy. A couple more runs and uh, one wicket less so far. 195 for five. Yeah, but they've done really well in terms of scoring. They scored over 100 runs a session for sure because they ended the first session at uh, 84 for three. So 111 runs. Yeah, 111 runs. So they've done well in terms of that regard. Fortunately, Django is in there to see the fruits of his labor, hopefully. <coughs> Andre Dennis, the debutant, is going to have the ball in his hand. He will bowl the last over before T, and probably going to be bowling an over to get a rest to come back and bowl some more overs. He probably want his pacers to finish with 12, 13 overs for the day equally. It's been, it has been a good contest over the two sessions of Fuzzy. I mean, it's been a very, very good battle, as you said, between bat and ball. 
Um, spinners really doing better for Jamaica than the Pacers, other than McCarthy, who I think was excellent. Dennis still finding his rhythm. Hopefully he does better in this second spell. Has an opportunity to just maybe have a nice boost in the silver. Catch the silver napping. Yeah, that's a length that I think you have to go to Joshua the Silver. He tends to play around that front pad as well. Has to be targeting the stumps. And if there's any movement from a good length, then the ball will do its work. What are your thoughts on, uh, on Dennis's action? You can have a look at it after this over. Fazi, oh, sorry to put you on the spot. He has a good run up. High knees, strong. That's tickled fine. Will he get it fine enough? No, the field is well coming around. At OJ Shields. Yeah, he has a good run up. Strong run up. Strong action. Of course, Penny was. Uh, oh, chested a bit. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, Penny was at length to see he's a military man. She so has a high front foot. Really, really high front foot, which I think is good because it'll, it'll help him get. He uh, uses that pivot. He gets it high and then slams it down hard enough. Obviously, he'll be a very fit man, and I was impressed with his physique because, of course, uh, early on the ground. Naturally, he's going to be fit. Yeah, naturally. Naturally, because he's Jamaican, especially because he's a member of the Jamaican Defense Force. <coughs> a change in the field here. Two slips in a gully coming back in. And there's no man deep for that short delivery. So he's going to be targeting those stumps on the edge. Good line. Good judgment shown so far by Bidesi. Just 9 of 25 deliveries. What was your number, Fozzie? When you played your game? Varied. Varied? Yeah. In the top half, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always went with uh, 96 because, of course, I'm a Liverpool fan, so the 96. Oh, you're talking your shirt number? Yeah, shirt number. I thought number. your batting position number. My apologies. No. Oh, batting position. No, no, I didn't have a number. Per se. I don't remember my number. No, I don't remember wearing shirts with number. Okay. Yeah. Oh, white was closing. closing so what? Was, so what number would you have chosen? Probably then? twenty-one. I don't have a reason. I just like twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good number. I don't know how you determine it's a good or bad number. What you do know? you use to decide if it's a good or a bad number? But that's T at one ninety-six for five. Good session for the visitors. Over 100 runs scored, two wickets lost. But you still believe the game is evenly poised because if you add two more wickets to these, you would say that the Scorpions are in a driver's seat position. So the first wicket went down at 29, 81 for the second one, 84 for the third. And then that partnership between the Silver and Jangu took the game away from the Scorpions for a bit, over 80 runs. I know these two have batted brilliantly. 112 runs added in the session. And you can join us in 20 minutes time for more action.
Action resumes here in the third and final session of the first day in this round seven match. It's the Cricket West Indies Regional Four Day Championships. Host Jamaica Scorpions up against the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Trinidad and Tobago Red Force have the slight upper hand. Uh, so this third and final session will be critical. Can they force that upper hand? Can they flex the muscle? Or will the Scorpions have a little sting in this final session? The all-knowing Marlon Pinnock will tell you exactly what's going to happen. As I welcome him and I say good afternoon to Mr. Pinnock. Good afternoon. In a bright fluorescent green. You can see him from the skies, from the moon. That's how big he is and in terms of legend-wise. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mr. Andy Chan. Good afternoon to all viewers. It's a wonderful game of cricket so far between, of course, the Scorpions and the Red Force. I would say the Red Force have the upper hand so far. The outstanding partnership between Jangu and, of course, Captain De Silva really took the game away from the Scorpions. But at this stands now the Scorpions test word for some quick wickets after this tea break interval here at Sabina Park. G4 Royal will uh, start proceedings from the northern end of the ground. Josh De Silva, yep, he's there. He's fighting on 43. And a good captain's knock from him now in Bidesi. Only recently joined him. And boy, oh boy, did... Just the silver need a knock. Haven't been in the best of form in this year's West Indies Regional Championship. And of course, this is the final game. So they want to make a mark for the Red Force team as well. Yes, not an attacking field as such for the silver. I think they're giving him, an, giving him a lot of room on that offside. Back and tries to pull this one through mid wicket. Good at that shot. Gets that thick outside edge there. Good delivery. Sort of reaching for that one, yeah. Play that one uh, in front of his pads. One for 42 so far is Royal. Tends to play a bit late on this occasion. Was the silver. Beautiful sunshine here, as I mentioned this morning. The crowd staff was shuffling up. But we haven't have any showers here at Sabina Park. It's a lovely cricket. Playing that drive a little too close to his body is the silver. There's a little bit of extra bounce, and uh, at last, delivery was straight at him. I think, if, if I can uh, point out something after this delivery, that one just gets past short leg. Does it go full? Good Royal, get a mistake there. Let's have a look at the replay on this one. Uh, played into the ground. The end of the over, made and to start, 196 for five. But if you look at the silver, when he settles himself to bat against the spinners, his back foot is anchored in that crease. He's not light and, light and fleet on his foot. And you need to be light and fleet on your foot, I think, especially against the spinners. Here, yeah, as you see, Andre Dennis getting ready to start proceedings from the Michael Olin end. Yeah, he had uh, just an over before the break. On 
DB as well for the Scorpions. to see him getting the opportunity as well he works extremely hard on his cricket good start right on the money as you mentioned Changi good to see the soldiers giving him support as well in terms of a score here Penny I mean I think if, if you get 280 that would be a fairly competitive score might be low scoring, but uh, given the Jamaica, the brittle batting of the Jamaicans, um, <laughs> and they have a lot of adjustments in this batting team, so it's a sort of a brand new batting team as well. Well, 280, pretty decent score, aren't you? I wouldn't say a low score, a pretty decent score in my eyes. Well, I would think it's about par. You want to get at least that in, a, in, in this four-day version in first-class cricket. What base and out we've seen so far. Some big scores in this year's well, if you, So if you want to say two so let's be accurate, Penny, <laughs> of course, for our viewers. So if, if you want to say two fifty is a par score, then two eighty is at least a competitive. You're pushing up to that three hundred mark. Well placed with that, Trinidad. They can just uh, hold it together. Going at that one. The spectator catch there. Bit too casual from Bedesia, I think, on that occasion. And this would really test the Scorpions' batting as well. Knowing that they don't have the experienced players in the lineup. If you look around on the field, the Scorpion batting lies around Kurt McKenzie. Played at the highest level. Test cricket. He's the only player who plays at the highest level on the field as well. Well played by Bidesi. Stood up tall, played that square, won't get four for it. But it's nice too to get the first runs off the tee. And Red Force with two runs within the 200 mark. Indeed. Speed is time there. Didn't try to overheat it, Andrew. Yeah. Just use the pace of that and guide it in front of that field at the Packwood Point region with two easy runs to his credit. I think I think that's one of the, the maybe the facets of the four day game that a cricketers need to develop. If you want to call it delicate cricket, it's it's the easy touches, it's the, the maneuvering of gaps to get ones and twos, it's the it's a quiet accumulation. And that is what I like about the Guyana Happy Eagles team no, in the yeah, last outing. Yeah. There was great on doing that. And r aggressively running singles as well. Indeed. That completes the 62nd at 198 for the loss of five. And that, but that's a classic example of what BDC could learn because here, there he is, he's trying to hit it, power through that gap. Well, maybe if he just tries to place it, then he can get it in the gap and get two. The same way that he rode that last delivery and got, and got two runs. And that is one of the things he needs to learn to do rotate the strike and that's a sore point in the Caribbean as well as you can see a shot of the skies here in Kingston Jamaica and that's a shot of the George Headliston as well a very historical venue it is at Sabina Park I think the first test played here at Sabina Park was in 1930. Let's take a look at games around the region after this delivery. So that man, Mikai Louis, has scored another 100 as the Leeward Islands have gotten to 256 for 7. 
That's again, so that's in that big match against the Windward Island Volcanoes. Jewel Andrew getting to 68, so another good score from the wicketkeeper batter. Proud member of that union. Marlon P Pinnock is president of. This one is a fine delivery. And uh, down the leg side, and it will get away for four. And it's buys, unfortunately. Josh De Silva going for the sweep, but didn't get anything on that one. Bad line delivery there. Which of our Royal, and as a wicked keeper, he don't want that to go down. With your name on it, a buy. And that's the result. Strain on the line of Alexa this time around. As a 200 comes up for the Red Force, meet that. 202 for the loss of five. Guy and the Harpy Eagles have just lost their first wicket against the combined campuses and colleges. They are 45 for one after bowling the CCC out for 200. Back into his crease and pushes it nicely square, but there's no run for the silver. He does well in terms of going back into his crease, but his, uh, his forward game against the spinners, I guess like many cricketers around the region, leaves a, leaves a lot to be desired. Well, this one is clipping out to a square area for his 44th run, and that completes the 63rd or 203 for the loss of five. And I'm not sure there might be rain in Antigua um, because there's the Barbados Pride uh, having been bowled off to 153 by the West Indies Academy. The West Indies Academy 18 for 1. So it's interesting, only 40, if you look at that, 47 overs have been bowled in that game. Shot at the Kingston Cricket Club here. Yeah? Some uh, clearly Jamaica Scorpions fans because you can see they're resplendent in their yellow and green penny <laughs> green black and gold brilliant colors of jamaica very unique flag known the world over i'm sure beautiful country as well and did you know that trinidad and tobago's flag national flag is very similar to the diving flag the national dive or the international divers flag Flick nicely through the Midwicket region. Where will that go? How far is it gone? And it's four for Josh De Silva. Inches closer to 50. And Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, 200 up, 203 for five. I think that's 207 now with that shot. Exquisite timing there from De Silva. 31 run partnership from 56 deliveries. Strain on the line of the leg stump was OJ Shields. And this one, the silver, is in terrific form. Good delivery, good follow up there from Dennis. Almost catching the silver out with a pop up the mid on. Interesting to see in that partnership that the uh, combi the Contributions are about equal 14 uh, from Bidisi, so 11 from Bidisi and 14 from the silver. And it would have just been 10 before that four as well. And there's that famous mound stand where party boy Foster has had many a beverages. And beyond that stand is a Hakai security company. Nice drive, mid off as well. That's Almost picked that gap to Silva. That's Captain Pete. Someone there at the Whitish mid off doing well. Andre Dennis on this occasion. It's over pitching, but lucky enough for the Silva and good for the man Dennis. It's a dot delivery. Yep. As a ball bat, it's, it's fairly economical. I don't think he had troubled the batsmen as much as he would have liked. That's a not a bad delivery at all. It's 
think beat someone so far doing a good job in rotating his bowlers and if you look at the overrate so far outstanding Short delivery. Oh, I think Joshua De Silva is wearing that one. It's on the helmet, I believe. We'll see whether that had a strike. Let's turn our attention to the replay here. Ooh, good Ooh. short delivery. It ricocheted into the side of the helmet. <laughs> well, shrugged to say, well, that's how it is. Good piece as well. Yeah, a good short delivery there. Excellent by the man Andre Dennis. Take a next look at this delivery from Andre Dennis. Yeah, shades into the helmet. I think he pulled very early, was the silver. Yeah. I wouldn't say beat him for pace there. I thought he pulled very early. He's good and okay. I thought it deflected off the shoulder, which would have taken the blow into the helmet a little bit. Made, made that blow a little softer, but it looked like it was direct on the helmet. And uh, it seems to be okay, and it seems to be ready to continue. Well, then it's so far. Just one delivery remaining in his eight over. None for 25 so far would want to make a mark in this game on debut at home. This is a perfect place for him to really. And of course, the question everybody will be asking is will he honor his defense force mate like another famous defense force bowler, Sheldon Cottrell? With that salute, we shall mm -hmm. see. Short delivery again, and he pulls this one this time to silver. But the field is out there, it's just a single there. He moves on to 49. He'll pinch the strike. 2 8 for 5. 64 overs completed. Marlon Pinnock, your thoughts on the game as some school children come with uh, a late lunch and early dinner from snacks to watch the cricket. And why not? Cricket didn't play here at Sabina Park. Not a lot of supporters with kids coming out maybe two to three years from now. Some of these same kids will be playing for the Scorpions. Remember back in the days watching Jamaica playing regional cricket. Sabina Park usually full, Andrew. Quite now, so. Nowadays free of course and nobody coming to support the scorpions but tamar Lerb, tamar lambert was a great leader as well flick nicely and that will be 50 for joshua silver will he come back for two no he will not it's a fighting half century from the red force captain yes indeed batted extremely well for the red force team and been positive throughout this inning so far have a big bulk down and that shows 50 from 84 deliveries will play to captain the silver 209 for the loss of five the red force team they lost the toss this morning are resenting to bat and what this seemed to be a classical batting wicket here at sabina park If you realize the games played here so far, the Scorpions always getting early wickets but not being able to finish off things, Andrew. And you find teams scoring over 300 runs plus in the games. I think the Scorpion lock the skiller or the skill intent or the fighting finish of the game. And then swine the games. They are getting quick wickets and 
team still managed to score over 300 plus per game. Stringing together some good deliveries here, G-Boy Royal. It's been a marathon spell from him. He's sent down a lot of overs. This is actually his second spell, I should say. Because uh, he plays Mansing from this end. And not, pres not much pressure is being applied to the batters as well. And that completes the 65th at 209 for loss of five. As you see, Sabina Park gets dark once more, Angel. Yeah, but uh, we expected some rain because it looked like some rain clouds were building up. But so far, the rain gods have decided to stay away from uh, Sabina Park and said the sun gods have shown down. Well, Dennis will be trying. It's the soldier versus the silver. <laughs> Well, that's Supper Dennis against the Silver. <laughs> the man who hails from Clarendon. Ched Light District as well. Apparently, he was a grown man back in his younger days. There's a shot of the clothes from that man, Kadir Mohammed, our cameraman. And he's doing a fantastic job as well, Kadir Mohammed. Brilliant, my friend. Mastering his job. Yes, indeed. Nothing compared to our producer Dylan Sharma, a man of few words. <laughs> Manu, you've, known, you've known him two weeks. He's barely said fifty to you, <laughs> and forty-eight of those are hello and good afternoon. Man who loves his coffee as well. Oh yes, oh yes, indeed. Well, he should know that he's experiencing a lot of the Jamaican culture, especially <laughs> the coffee. We actually had a very pleasant drive on Sunday, Penny. Um, the entourage from Trinidad. We took a drive on Sunday up into the Blue Mountains, and it was an absolutely glorious drive. I can just beautiful imagine. Beautiful country, yeah. beautiful landscape. And we had coffee at a, at a lovely establishment. So it really was a, it really was an amazing experience because uh, out of the 500 words that he said to me over the course of two weeks, <laughs> about 50 of them have been Blue Mountains. So when he was going to get to experience some Blue Mountain coffee, and he got to experience some Blue Mountain coffee in the Blue Mountains. Oh my God! Yeah, fantastic day for him. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it was an experience and a half. I'm not sure how you take your coffee, Penny, but he takes his absolutely black and rich and beautiful. That's how I love it as well. Mm, black is beautiful, yes, Penny. As well as brownies corruption. No. <laughs> Any sugar in yours, Penny? Not even a little Betty? Not at all. Oh, I do love a little Betty, you know that. That's a Betty milk. Yes, Betty. <laughs> That's the famous brand of condensed milk here in Jamaica. Put Betty in at that. Unfortunately, I do have a street tooth, so I need to stop it on the mornings, Penny, because that's the problem. I do, I'm starting to like the taste of coffee, but I'm starting to like the taste of sweet coffee. And that's not good. Goes for the short ball again, and he's slow on the uptake on that one, is but Daisy. He's getting a little bit bogged down here. Is Bedisi. Let's have a look at the replay on that one. I think that ball from Dennis 
surprised him on this occasion. Tennis ball bounce. Yeah, indeed. It shows the fitness of that man, Andre Dennis. Has yes. a 66 over ball. And he's getting it to bounce at least up at, at eye level. That's one thing he works on every day is fitness that completes a 66. A 2 1 0 for the loss of 5. 5 o'clock in the mornings, Andre Dennis will be up to go to the gym. That's a, that's a beautiful playing deer flying across yeah. over the grounds of Sabina Park. I'm not even sure where it is. Our cameraman Kadir Muhammad is showing off. His ears are burning because we're talking about him. <coughs> Current run rate 3.18 so far. The Scorpions would want to break this partnership as soon as possible. Don't want the Red Force to get away here on day one of round seven action from Savannah Park. Easy and effort clip out to the Packwood Square for yet another single to the Red Force captain. The Silver is up to 52. And the total is up to 2-1-1. For the loss of five, it's getting a little bit too easy for the silver now. But this is getting a little bogged down. I don't know if the pressure will get to them. Has not a run in some deliveries, but I there was there was a nice competition. Competition, uh, captain versus captain. I thought that that salmon bowled really really well to the silver. So I would like to see salmon and McCarthy bowling in tandem to the silver. And I think if it just they might just be able to build that little bit of pressure that they need to, to take a wicket here. I would also try to put a little bit more pressure on Bidesi here because he's trying to manufacture a run. I think it's he's been bogged down now for over eleven or twelve deliveries. Possibly a bit more. Actually, I think he's only had two runs after T. And that came off Dennis. I, I definitely would put a man at forward short leg as well. Yeah. Just put him under a, a little pressure. I would say maybe a second slip or a silly mid off, yeah. Yeah, he is trying to manufacture a run again. He's using the angles well, but can't pick the gap. End of the over. Good over from Royal. It's a 211 for 5. 67 overs gone. So Dennis will be continuing. Just a slip and a goalie behind the bat for Dennis. And there's a backward point as well. This time around he will be bowling to the Red Force captain, De Silva. You realize the Scorpions fast bowler. Bowlers haven't got much out of this wicket here at Sabina Park on this the first day. I think there's still a chance if they separate this pair they can uh, see what they can do with the lower order. But Dennis has been very economical so far as well. Just not getting his name on the wicket column. Feeling for that one outside the off stump is the silver. Fends it to backward point. 
And of course, if he had used the pace and gotten that pass, that would have been in the Kingston Cricket Club for, the, for a drink. Left or right off that field, yeah. it would be four written all over it. Yeah. But you can see his confidence. Another 23 overs remaining in the day's play. Scorpions getting in the overs very quickly, Andrew. Oh, yes, Penny. Nice combination of pace and spin. That's a nice drive. That is pleasant from the silver. The mid-off is around nicely. Excellent work by the captain as well. Pete Summon covering some ground to his right. I like the look of the silver so far in the middle. In the commentary box, we sort of shielded from the noise that uh, that happens out there. But it, it, it's nice when you go outside and you hear that the, the scorpions are chatting. They are lively in the field. They're supporting their players. Close up of the soldier, Andre Dennis. Big shoulders. All he has is Jamaica stripes on today. Well built fast bowl as well. Nice pull, he gets that through mid wicket. Will the fielder get around? He does not. Played that delicately, did Josh De Silva. Swiveled nicely and in front of the square through that mid wicket region. That was four for the moment. It left back. He yeah, made it look so easy, is De Silva. It's a very West Indian shot, I think it is. <laughs> um, Outstanding shot that was as well. Yeah. There, the stones of the mound stand. 39 runs partnership so far. Another reasonable partnership building so far by the Red Force team. In particular, this man in strike. Feeling for that one again. Striding nicely. Just again been looking for that shot square, Penny. And that Might be his downfall if he's not careful. 215 for 5. 68 overs completed. Yes, in this occasion. Just the silver just playing away from his body. As you can see, the cloud starts to build over here in Kingston, Jamaica. That's, a, that's the sign you would want to see here at Sabina Park. If you're a fan of cricket who loves the game of cricket and want to watch cricket for the entire day. I, uh, if, you look at, if you look at the scores from Django and Keon Otley, 51 and 45 penny, really good starts and not going on. I think that was a problem. That has been a problem with the Red Force batting this season. Not to be overly critical of them, they've done well. As well as the and Scorpions as well. Yeah, and they haven't, and they haven't, uh, they haven't just pushed on as, mu as much as they would have liked. And that's a sore point we have in the Caribbean as well. Full toss. And he gets that through. Will he get some runs? Bidesi, he does indeed. A freebie from Royal. And Bidesi finally adds to his total. He gets a four. And even then he was lucky because it burst through the hands of Dennis, I believe. Bit of a sloppy feeling effort there from the soldier. Not one of the best feelers on the park as well. And you have him in that cover region. Won't be easy for him. A very tall chaplain for us. Bula feeling in the cover region. Well, being told as a mediocre band fielder, look at Kyron Pollard. He's about six four, six five, and he's an excellent fielder. Well, Andre Dennis is not that tall, but he's not the greatest on the park for the Scorpions. I'd rather to see Dennis at the backward square leg. <laughs> Have more time to see the ball, Andrew. Well, as you mentioned that, as you mentioned that, uh, Bidesi should try to capitalize on that. If you know Dennis isn't a particularly good feeler, you've just seen an example of it. 
get a couple more into the covers and you might get an easy run and there's a uh, there's a very big gap because he's quite uh, straight if you want there's a big gap he takes if he's 51 deliveries so far this one he pushes down to long one. That's good cricket from BDC. That will give him a little confidence. Excellent cricket. This is the cricket you want to see from the youngsters. Any youngsters watching could learn something about that shot from BDC. Been at the wicket for over 52 deliveries. Spending crucial time at the wicket for the Red Force team. And hence why there's another partnership blossoming so far from the Red Force. Ooh, back to that one dangerously, but way down the leg side. Got 20 some, for 5 after 69. I think he got some butt on it as well. Excellent call by umpire Joel Wilson. Yeah. Nine overs completed to 20 for 5. That's the Red Force after lost the toss this morning and was sent into bat by the Scorpions. Fair amount of people in to watch this uh, match and counter. Not a lot, but uh, certainly the hardcore cricket fans are there. Dieted cricket fans <laughs> supporting the Scorpions to the fullest, to the wire final game if you you realize all the scorpions game played here at sabina park that's a plus for the scorpions they didn't use it to the advantage umpire was just doing a bit of round arm action there that's umpire christopher wright that looks like desmond haynes there and the black no, it's not. My apologies, as we as certainly not that many. <laughs> not at all. There is some discussion going on there, a lot of pointing. Well, some officials. Well, back on the field, Andre McCarthy has been replaced. Andre Dennis from the Michael Olin end of the ground. Yeah, this should be interesting. I did say I wanted to see a battle between McCarthy and the Silver. As usual, the universe will not unfold for me just yet. I have to wait a little bit. As uh, Bidesi is on strike. Patience, of course, is the game. And that is required now of the Red Forest team. Not bad to start with, to BDC. Oh. 1 for 16, 7.1 overs. It really shows, those figures really show why he was a, the pick of the bowlers, or has been the pick of the bowlers, I would say, for the Scorpions. BDC so far, faced the 53 deliveries for a 16, yeah. but unbothered so far at the wicket. Other than that man, of course, Pete Salmon, who has two wickets as well, really led from the front. Jerome Foster is impressed with his captaincy, and Jerome Foster is not easily impressed. He told me my commentary was okay, which is as best as you can get from Jerome Foster. Glowing praise indeed. <laughs> Man with the dictionary brain as well. Really interesting round seven that's uh, unfolding here on the first day. Leeward Islands, 270 for eight versus the Windward Islands Volcanoes. 
Nine and a half eagles, 64 for one after bowling out CCC for 200. Even 200, nice drive from Mohan for no run. And then the Academy have progressed to 44 for one after dismissing the Barbados Pride for 153. And interestingly enough, Penny, that 153 took them only 40 overs, 39.5 overs. So that does really excellent performances by the West Indies Academy. The bowl of Barbados in 39 overs and 40 overs, that's an excellent batting, that's an excellent bowling performance. Clearly Barbados maybe tried to impose on the academy because that's a run rate pushing four runs and over. Fortunately did not work out for them. This one, Andrew McCarthy, one for 16. Up in the air, and that's hoiked over midwicket. That is a stand and deliver shot from Bidesi. It sat up nicely in the pitch. First time McCarthy really misses his mark, and easy pickings for Bidesi. Shot of a 30 there by Bidesi. <laughs> shot begging to be hit. Tremendous timing as well. That's At the end of the over, it's 224 for five. 70 overs have been bowled, and um, Mr. Jerome Foster will come and take his position. of our Royal will be continuing. The Red Force finding batting ease in the middle. 70 overs completed by the Scorpions. 24 for 5 the Red Force team. What is a classical batting wicket here at Savannah Park as we welcome back Jerome Foster in the commentary box. Easy runs for Joshua De Silva, who has now started to elevate himself above the rest of the batters in this lineup. He looks a touch different. He looks so easy on what I presume to be a placid surface. Not much happening, Navin Bidesi. He's now stroking his 21st run. He's looked quite easy as well, unfazed, chanceless innings from both, Scorpions have to dig in here, it's getting out of hand for them, it's 225 for 5. Both look very easy at the wicket, finding, scoring a run, it's very easy. Yeah, that's a 50, run partnership is up, make that 52 now, two runs out in the deep. And you know, running the Scorpions ragged, the Red Force. And the silver looks oh so easy. And another team looks to get to that magical figure mark of 300 Foster. Yeah, first batting point is 250. Yeah. Realize the silver so far in his knock of 59 from 97 unbothered so far. Almost dragged that on. I was a little bit lazy from the silver. Yeah. Playing away from his body, Foster. I wouldn't say lazy, but it just kept a little bit low on him. This one was quicker through the year to complete the 71st. 
a two two eight for loss of five. Realize it's getting very dark here at Savannah Park. Two butters getting off century so far in the Red Force innings. Janku getting an half century. And so to the captain of the Red Force team, the Silver. Gotten two partnerships so far, over 50 runs. Two partnerships, very helpful to the Red Force team. Look at the score. 228 for five. Yeah, I think it's getting dark here at Sabina Park. And the umpires have an issue. Umpire Christopher Wright. Going to be meeting with Joel Wilson. And I think it's going to be pretty much telling the players that they're going to go off. Or is it that it's not fit enough for the Pacers to be bowling? The light. Seems as if that's what the plan is going to be. So let's see if someone honors the umpire's views. Or just say, well, I want to bowl pace now. It's going to be interesting, but it's pretty dark here. That's what we can tell you. 19 overs left to be bowled. And the Scorpions were doing well in terms of their over rate. Yeah, they, they have been doing a fantastic job so far when it comes to the overrate. Beat someone must be applauded for his excellent captaincy so far in the game. But based on what we have seen here, the players making their way off at Sabina Park. It's getting very dark and hence why two umpires Christopher Wright of Jamaica and of course Joel Wilson of Trinidad and Tobago decided the safety of the players is to get them off the park faster. So it's, it's going to be a wait and see to see if play re restarts because the lighting is obviously not the greatest at the moment. A little bit unfortunate. This partnership has been steady. 52 runs added between the pair of Bidesi and Joshua De Silva. And it has been halted because of bad light. So it's obviously not the end of the day's play, but it's highly unlikely that this is going to get any better. So we have to wait until. The ruling or the judgment for the day has been made. The umpires are standing out there before they come to a conclusion as to what they will do from here. But until we have some news from Sabina Park, we'll take a break and you can rejoin us as Bad Light has stopped play here in the seventh round clash in Kingston, Jamaica.
Friends, that's Sabina Park. After a short rain delay, action will resume here. And the news from the middle is that with play starting back, the cutoff time is 5.48 this afternoon. Uh, that's local time, which will of course be 6.48 Eastern Caribbean. Andrew Chan and your company for this last hour or so. Alongside Jerome Foster, Fuzzy, Red Force uh, climbing the mountain quite well, and they're doing their, their, they're on their way to an imposing tour. So it's all, it's all now to Josh De Silva and Navin Bedesi to start back and start fresh. Yeah, and I think the Scorpions, they desperately need at least another wicket to take them to the close of play. For the batters, it's a brand new challenge. It has been almost, what, 45 minutes off the field. So they want to at least reset themselves and ensure that both of them get to the close of play. They were looking as if they were on course to do so and the rain halted them for a bit, but it has been very, very easy in this third session. And Joshua Da Silva has rose among his peers or risen above his peers. Yeah, it's a minimum of 19 overs left in the day's play. And uh, that's one flick down the leg side. There's a field that fine leg, and Bidisi gets a run. Um, but of course, the other thing is the new ball will be due in uh, just about eight overs. I'd be willing to take that new ball now, given the conditions. It's a little bit hazy. Not a, yeah, hey, oh, all right, say, okay. When it becomes due, the, when I say no, meaning the conditions, <laughs> I take it in what is right, very right, right now. No, yeah, give I mean, away this the ball yeah, and give uh, me that new ball right now. It's a little yeah. bit hazy, it's a little bit overcast, it's getting a little bit dark, it could be problematic. Well, would you in that case bring on the spinners and let them run through those nine overs quickly? Well, given that they're restarting after the break, you don't want it easy for them either, the batters. So it's a combination of factors. And if you're able, uh, it, it probably expects spin from the other end as well. So you're going to have pace from one and spin from the other to just keep that yeah. over rate going. The OJ Shields will be fresh though. Yeah. And Dennis. Andre look. Dennis has bowled a lot of overs. He has bowled around nine overs today. Yeah, those clouds to the southern end look a lot darker on the screen than they actually are. There's some cloud cover, but uh, that threat of rain was really just a, a very minimal threat indeed. Beautiful. Nice shot. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Over pitch from McCarthy. It's really gentle, medium pace. And Joshua the Silver. Made it look very, very easy. Just one step, one lean. And what he did exquisitely well was that he transferred his weight right into that shot. That's a top shot. Yeah, that was smooth and sweet from Josh De Silva. Moves into the 60s. And there's our friend from Weeper having some conversations with the Jamaica Scorpions. Probably getting his information to make his report, his daily report. 90% of that report is about the meals you get fuzzy, what he thinks of the fruit platter if his pineapple was fresh. He's a good gentleman, it's a pleasure to talk to. Down the leg side this time, good fielding, excellent stuff there. At that short mid wicket position, that's Carlos Brown. All to play for in the city of Manchester, Fuzzy, as it goes to penalties in that Champions League match. Man City versus Real Madrid. Pleasant drive. Oh, that was dead straight from Josh De Silva. That is a delightful four if there ever was one to end the over. 237 for five. And he had that pose to go with it as well. Following him right through. That's the middle of that grey nickels. But that's an outstanding shot. And that's what his 10th boundary. He 
looks like a man in charge at 237 for five. Interestingly, it's pace from the other end. Loji Shields is taking the new is taking the uh, is taking up the mantle from Jivor Royal, and so your thoughts were wrong in terms of that fuzzy. Uh, it's 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 cool, so it's ideal time for the Pacers to go. Didn't we watch so far from, from Shields? Hasn't yeah. found his radar yet. I'm lucky not to get a tickle on that one, but you see, as well. Better, a little too wide though from Shields. Yeah. He has changed his angle. He's gone round the wicket. He's obviously not happy or comfortable with what he has been serving up so far. So he wants to have Bidesi playing at more deliveries. He has to use up what is on offer here, Shields. He has, he's almost using this over to work himself back into, form, into gear. He's in first gear, trying to up that gear. Full toss, wasted there from Bedesi. Could have gotten a freebie there. The loose delivery, wild stuff from OJ Shields here. I think he has something in his eye there. She is yet to abort his run. The attentive Captain Pete Salmon. Very nicely playing optometrist. Uh, not, not the greatest of things to happen to you. Especially when you're running at full speed, full tilt. Hmm. <laughs> the salmon also showing him what he plucked out of his eye.
shields still trying to get that accuracy still trying to find a way to have Bidesi playing and this over has felt as if it's gone on for 15 minutes Well played by Videsi, just opening the face, riding that past that backward point area. Is that the end of the over? It is indeed 238 for 5, 73 overs gone. Good time to give you an update as to what's going on in the games around the region. That's a lovely tug over the midwicket area. Andre McCarthy, despite being excellent in his first spell, has been tonked for six by Navin Badesi. Yeah, he's down on pace now. It's a third spell. And Bidesi climbed into that. He gave it everything. Not a massive fellow, but he sure has some power. That was destructive and brutal. And there's no one out there to fetch the ball. It's gone. So the Westernese Academy, uh, 107 for four, in reply to Barbados Pride's 50, 153 all out. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes have finally folded for an exact 300. The Windward Islands Volcanoes are six for one. Taking a look at the Leeward Islands scorecard, so there was that 100 for Mikhail Louis. Jeremiah Louis contributing with 41 not out. Three wickets for Ryan John. And he seems to hit that so well. It's into the car park area. But Bidesi has a bit of a breather as the ball is retrieved here at Sabina Park. And then taking a look at the final game, Guyana Harpy Eagles in a comfortable position, 114 for 1 after bowling out the CCC for a mere 200. Raymond Perez is not out on 61, so a good inning so far from the Guyana Harp Eagles opening batter. <clears throat> yeah, Bidesi looks as if he has been here for a very, very long time. It looks very easy for him, and he's striking the ball cleanly. He's finding the middle of the bat pretty regularly. And the Scorpions bowlers, they look a little bit tired in this prolonged final session. It's left to be seen. Bidesi is actually in his debut just for people who, who are out there and wondering. He's getting his single. That's a good single there. Did play this day cricket, but he's he's playing his first first class game. Bidis, he played four List A matches for the CCC in 2022. And so he was actually called up uh, the last round when the Red Force played CCC.
Tion Webster was supposed to play this game, but was injured. And uh, game at Scarborough last week, and that's uh, in Tobago. Pleasant drive, I but they see. Hit it square, won't get to the ropes, but he gets a comfortable two. <laughs> yeah, that was easy on the eyes again from the left hander. Left hander's dream. Uh, full delivery outside the off stump, no movement. And he can just get that right foot close to the ball and then lean into the drive. It's just a textbook shot for a left hander, but it's importantly two runs away from that batting point for the red force at no point it looked as if they weren't going to get there i must say it has been very very comfortable for them today outside of that mini stutter before lunch where they lost two wickets for three runs it has been very easy especially in this last session Pulled away through mid-wicket. Meat and drink for Josh De Silva. Lovely shot into the Kingston Cricket Club. And that's 250 up for the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. And if they continue to bowl that length, he's going to be feasting all day. He's going to love it. He's probably going to get to 100 tonight if he gets more of those. It's not in the area which threatens him, which is above his shoulder. It's about his waist. Because of the nature of the surface, it's so easy for the silver to be pouncing on those deliveries. You have to get it above his shoulder, above his eye line. As I continue to mention that I believe he's, he has all the qualities to be a top order player. Yeah. Wasted at number seven for the West Indies in my eyes. That's, That's a better short fine. delivery. Yeah. And there'll be back to back boundaries there. The rail's going off for O.J. Shields. It took a bounce in front of Dennis, who was getting around to do the fielding. And just as, a, just as he was about to go down, zoop, off the surface. I was trying to use his boot. Never going to get there. And Joshua De Silva is flaying his way closer and closer to another first-class century. Yeah. Now, the thing is, uh, uh, in this season, Joshua De Silva really has not had the best season prior to the game against CCC, where he didn't have much runs either. He had scored 137 in three games with just one half century. So, and he said that he needed to put a score on the board, and he's certainly doing that today. Um, so, of course, he's a young player, but he does have experience at the highest level of the game, Fuzzy. First time leading the Red Force as captain. But certainly a level of maturity within him. That is uh, good to see. <clears throat> Beautiful shot. But uh, Medoff comes around there. I thought he made better connection than that. And got out through the gap. Twenty-five years old, so has a lot of years in front of him, Joshua da Silva. Yeah. He's a wicked keeper, and if he continues to to give the West Indies useful contributions, obviously you want him to be scoring hundreds. You want him to probably get double figures in centuries for the West Indies to really seal that position. Looks like a slower delivery from Shields was trying to deceive I'm him. 
Uh, you, you're quite right, Fuzzy, but we have to remember <clears throat> that despite the fact that he's considered a senior player in the West Indies team, he's only played a handful of tests. If you look at it, Bradford, Craig Bradford is really the only man you can consider a senior player other well, than uh, Well, than it depends Roach. on what you call handful yeah. because he has more than 20. So it's, it's, I think he's getting closer and closer to 30 yeah. now. But he has been around the team for a while, as yeah. much as he's only 25. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right, what yeah. you're trying to get at. Yeah. So at least he's been around to know enough what's going on. Yeah. And he has toured in all the different conditions. He, I don't think he played in England before. He hasn't played in England before, but he, but he played in New Zealand. He has played in Australia twice. He did, and uh, did, did, wasn't he part of the COVID squad? The, the COVID, COVID lockdown. The COVID locked squad, down. I think that would have been Dorich in August 2020. July 2020, I think. Dorich I think he was part of the squad, though. The squad, yeah. Yeah, so he would have had experience. Yeah, so, yeah. so he, he has gone subcontinent. He has gone South Africa. And obviously has played in New Zealand, in New Zealand and, on, the Caribbean. and the Caribbean. I don't think the West Indies have, they have toured uh, India since he has been the wiki keeper. But he has been around. He has been in different uh, and, conditions. And he, yeah. And he still also uh, sometimes goes with the West Indies A squad. So I know he's been to... I think probably Bangladesh. Bangladesh kept in the team, yeah. kept in them in South Africa before the series to Australia recently. Yeah, 257 for five. He has 77, while Videsi has 31. Ball is going to undergo an inspection here, I believe. I think the umpire has brought out that measuring tool. See if the ball passes smoothly through the gap. I'll have to find out the official name for that tool. Is it just called the ball measuring tool, Fuzzy? Looks like the Andrew McCarthy experiment is at an end and Givor Royal will take up action from the southern end. Correct me if I'm wrong, Fuzzy, but I think the overcast conditions that you had spoken about are starting to dissipate now. It's gotten a little bit clearer. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit brighter now. so easily here Joshua De Silva has not offered a chance all day some would say he's batting like a dream it's been so easy it's something that you'd be scripting all your mm -hmm. life that you just float your way to 80 without any worries not one ball has spun across him he hasn't played a loose drive 
and his uh, strike rate is decent, of course, for uh, a four-day game, probably about 60, 59 or 60. Nice cricket, good cricket. He doesn't have to do anything fancy at all, Josh De Silva, and he isn't doing anything fancy. I think the one complaint maybe about his innings is that he hasn't picked the gaps as well as he would have liked. If I he think he has missed out on a couple, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit too much towards the fielders. But there's credit, he hasn't let it bog, bog him down. Navin Bidesi went through a, a very difficult patch when he was on 11. Didn't score for 20 or 30 deliveries. Since then, he's, uh, he's done quite well. Came together at 176 for five, so they're doing quite well. A little bit of grip there from Royal. Slow. Umpire Chris Wright having some issues with where he's landing. The partnership is 82. It's really blossoming. It's flourishing, and it's taking, it's taking some sting out of the Scorpion's tail not been able to create many opportunities and that's a tidy over comeback over from Javor Royal who has a wicket to his name but in the overall scheme of things the Red Force they are 258 yeah comfortable conditions now for Shonan and Tobago Red Force they weathered the difficult period just after the rain delay. It looks like Pete Salmon will resume. Bowled well against the silver earlier. The silver, one of those batters who immediately calls for his cap as he sees the spinners fuzzy. And Badesi is one of those that keeps his helmet on no matter what. Uh, the Scorpion is looking for the best field position here. And trying to plug a hole in that mid wicket region. There's no one deep on the mid wicket boundary. There's a backward square and there's a long on. The only men out. Missed out there, the silver. That was short. Played it early, it would have easily gone forward of point. Went straight to the man royal. That's going to be two, I think. Every day of the week. Yeah, the silver put on the skates. He was too good. Quick enough to get home. Yeah, you can hear the applause below us from the Red Force dugout. They enjoyed that. But that, that mid-wicket position that you're discussing there with the uh, close in mid on as well, I think that's a bit negative from uh, Salmon in terms of facing the silver. Goes for that slog sweep over mid-wicket. And that is a towering shot. Who has it gone all the way? It has indeed. It's six of the very best from the silver. Yeah. Picked it up with the angle, with the turn. And just opened those broad shoulders to smash it wide off long on. And it's obvious what Joshua the Silva is trying to do here. He's trying to get to 100 as quickly as possible. He doesn't want to go overnight into the 90s or even in the 80s if play permits well he still has a lot of time on his hands so but i think with that mid you see that's why i said that mid wicket is a defensive position if you want him you actually want him to to take that ball from fourth or fifth stump and try to hit it through mid wicket salmon is going to turn the ball away from joshua that's why i'm saying it's a negative tactic you're yeah. plugging the gap as opposed to wanting, wanting him to go deep in his crease and hit through there, and it might balloon up, he might miss it, get, might dribble back on the pads or the stumps. And now that field is going all the way and if, out. If he wants to plug that area, it would be best served if you move that man from point and get him into that mid-wicket region as well as having the deep mid-wicket. 
or you take the man from short leg and put him in that deep mid-wicket region. But he still believes that he can find a way to have Joshua De Silva poking at the delivery in front of the stumps. It's good to see Salmon's, at least Salmon's thought process is uh, in play. And there is the, the experience easy single. and the push for two. No, it's not on excellent work there. By the people are coming in off the boundary. That looks like Dennis. Yeah, experience showing there, just realizing that the fielder is now back on the boundary so he can just ease the ball into mid-wicket. And that's what I'm saying. If you're going to be worried about him scoring the runs there, you plug that hole with the man from point. Because if you're hit behind point, then you've, you have really bowled a bad delivery. Not that it's turning that square anyway, so maybe that's why the point is still there. But it's a very difficult act to balance when you have a player going as well as Joshua De Silva is going. And he looks awesome at the wicket. I think Bedesi just has to realize that he has time. I mean, he, if, if, he and, if he and De Silva are finished, a lovely little family there. That's Justin Beckford's father. Mm. And uh, so lovely Miss Beckford, I am assuming. Looks very proud, it looks very comfortable. Good afternoon to the Beckfords. Pete Salmon wearing that white brim cap quite jauntily on his head there, Fuzzy. He certainly has a lot to think about. Maybe his, br his brain is burning as to how he's going to separate this pair. They're closing in. They're just five runs away, I believe, from a, a hundred-run partnership. Mm. Actually, about, it's actually about nine runs away. Javon Buchanan is going to have the ball. Part timer. This get uh, this get some good spin with his off break. Let's see what happens. That's uh, nicely flicked through mid wicket again there by De Silva. In terms of batting you in the middle, Fozzie, what's some, what's some good advice you've gotten from a senior player while, while you all have been putting on a partnership? There have been several. Um, <laughs> I think the most cliche of all is that the longer you bat, the easier it becomes. Mm -hmm. And that you always have more time than you think. Simple to say, hard to do. Yeah, they're very simple to communicate yeah. but it, it it actually works to a T the longer you bat oh has he has he got an edge on that one yes he's given the partnership is separated but Daisy held his own there a little bit but that was a ungainly flash from him and unfortunately he has to go the Red Force lose their six wicket, 268 is on the board. Yeah, Javon Buchanan, the man with the magic arm, found a way to prize open this partnership that became a mountain for the Scorpions. Loop that one and a big whoosh from Bidesi. He was trying to clear long off. And because it's a part timer with the mid off inside where a, a regular 30 yard circle would be, Bidesi was invited interested but the execution was off and it was also easy for the scorpions to celebrate well flighted tossed up and that was all edge that was all but everyone went up in unison and that's a big moment for the scorpions 268 for six and they desperately needed that one a partnership that was just about getting to 100 and 92 runs it worth Scorpions found a way to break it, and guess who? 
The man yeah. in his second game, Javon Buchanan. Yeah, a couple of thoughts on that shot. First of all, uh, Benesi's body language, he didn't look behind immediately. So he wasn't sure if he had nicked it. So it was all on the umpire. We'll have a look at the replay on this one again. It was very close to the bat. Well, the umpire didn't even signal out. He just nodded his head. And Bidesi knew. He didn't even raise a finger. So he, yeah, no, but he, he nodded yeah. and then raised the finger just to confirm. Terrence Hines is a new bat in, in spite of all that. The other thing is I'm disappointed with Bidesi because... I mean, De Silva is, is getting the runs on the other end. Yes, he's been a little bit bogged down, but that really wasn't the way to go about it. And that's the whole... Because you have a part-time ball and you've thrown it away against the part-timey. Yeah, and, and so I think the Scorpions have to be on the offensive here to Heinz. He's known to be a hard hitter of the ball. Mm. Plays T20 cricket for the Trinbago Knight Riders. But he also had 93 against the Scorpions last season and rescued the Red Force out of a hole. So they know what he has. But they have to be on the offensive to him. They have to get men around him. Let's have a look at that ball again because that was some good <laughs> spinning there from Buchanan. And we'll have a look at it after this delivery. Yeah, it's quite, uh, quite sharp. Oh, and he's getting himself in a tangle there, is Hines. At the end of the over, it's a wicket for Javon Buchanan. As we say so long, farewell to Jerome Partyboy Foster. He has to go and bathe and change to get off to his next assignment. Marlon Pinnock sedately makes his way down. Drops another two blocks of ice in his cold beverage. Grabs his notebook. Settles himself and he's ready. A good afternoon to our viewers. A good afternoon to you again, Mr. Andrew Chang. A wonderful partnership has been broken by Javon Buchanan. A 92 run partnership between Josh De Silva and the youngster Bedassi, who looked very good at the wicket on debut. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how De Silva faces this. He certainly seemed uh, intent on getting the ball through. And he gets this one through mid-wicket again. Just gets it past the fielder. And they'll come back with two. So he moves on to 90, the nervous 90s penny. Not that you would ever be nervous at all. I don't know. Where have you ever been nervous in your life, Marlon Pinnock? Well, once I'm at the wicket, starting my innings, I tend to be very nervous. Mm. Was once... I'm off the mark. It's all over for me. Well, that's good. Well, that important single. Josh just needs 10 more of them. That's well, another flick through mid-wicket. This one has hit even better. Will it get to the ropes? Dennis is putting his long legs in. And no, he stuck the boot up. But the ball just about dribbled in. Josh De Silva moves on to 94. Absolutely brilliant batting. Good timing there by the silver. Just came inside the line and top that ball to the vacant mid wicket area. They're also closing in on that magical 280 I discussed, Penny. As well as closing in on his fifth century at this level. Back and cuts, and he gets this one down to third man. That's another four for Josh De Silva. He doesn't even run the full run because he knew as soon as he left its back, that was four all the way. Elegantly played 
down to the thick and third man bungee. This is class of the man in the middle, Josh De Silva. And just two runs away from that magical figure of the Red Force captain. Yeah, and I love how he stepped on the gas here, Penny. It's good to see that, uh, uh, you know, as he got his 50 and 70 and he got comfortable, he knew how to maneuver the ball around and, and work his way around. 98 he has. What's going to happen now? Well, let's see. Oh, that one is pushed nicely into the cover region. Is he going to push for two? No, it's just going to be one. So he'll be on 99. A there was risky. a chance. I don't think there was a chance for two at all there. Because that man came very, very quickly off the boundary. That's Carlos Brown. But that was just out of the reach <laughs> of that feeler, OJ Shields, at the cover region. But another run to Josh De Silva, inches closer to a milestone, would be his fifth regional first class entry. My apologies for our viewers who have, uh, may have heard me sneeze just now. Thought I covered <laughs> the bike properly. Not a good sign here, Andrew. <laughs> Flick nicely by Hines, and the mid on makes a meal of it. That's that man, Dennis, again. Mid wicket, I should say. Hines is off the mark. And that completes. And he pinches the strike away from Josh De Silva. And 280 for six. After 79 overs. So another 12 re overs remaining in the day's play. But if you look at the time, the cutoff time sh should be 5.48. <laughs> so another 28 minutes before close of play on day one of its seventh round action from Sabina Park. But what a brilliant knock so far by the Red Force captain, Andrew. Yeah, he's probably happy he's not facing golden hand Buchanan right now. <laughs> and Come if you realize... Javon Buchanan, first over, just a run. And yeah. a very important wicket to him as well. Yeah, indeed. Getting the rush ball. from Bidesi, you have to say. Yes, it's just a rush of blood there. Yeah. And that was disappointing from uh, what I've seen from Otley, Jangu, and Bidesi now. Third batter throwing away their and hand. And they all got starts, Otley. Uh, yeah. Penny, my apologies. That <laughs> was annoying. Just poor shot selection in the end. Hi. This <laughs> goes for a big one. And that's poor shot selection, but that's what you expect from Terence Hines. Was looking to hit that ball over cover. Excellent <laughs> footwork there to get his back foot back in the crease. He knew Morris is swift behind his thumbs. And for a part-time spinner, Buchanan tends to spin the ball a lot, Andrew. He gets bounced too as well, eh? because I mean that last delivery to Hines. Bounce quite nicely. Well, playing that one outside the leg stump. It's all happening here with Terence Hines on strike. The Red Force got two good partnership in this game so far. And hence why they are 280 for six. And I would say this is a Pass score. Being that the Scorpions haven't gotten over that 300 mark only two times for the season. Good action from Javon Buchanan. It's a limited movement, but I like his little hops and skips. He's skipping and hops into the crease. Terrence Hines goes deep in this crease, pulls this one down to square leg, to deep fine leg, I should say, and that's four. Badly aligned by Buchanan and well. Fed on by Hines. Yes, indeed. The strain on the line of legs on this time was Chauvin Buchanan. And not the most convincing shot at all for four runs, nonetheless, to Hines, who is up to five at the completion of the 81st. The 80th, it's 284 for the loss of six.
Josh De Silva is on strike with 99 on the board. Jivo Royal will continue. Josh De Silva had some fun off the last over against him. See if Royal can come back better. Goes through that midweek again, and uh, <laughs> Dennis as well this time. Gets on a little gingerly, a little awkwardly, but makes a stop. Long barrier at the midwicket position, Penny. Uh, a hell to run rate so far by the Red Force team. Over three and a half runs for over been scored here by the Red Force. Got that. He's going for the run. The throw comes in and it's a little bit wild. And Joshua De Silva gets the single that turns him into gold. He takes a bow there. That's 100. His fifth first class century. Well done for the Red Force skipper. Kisses the Trinidad and Tobago badge on his cap. And what a celebration for that man. It's been a captain's knock and a half. Yes, indeed. Came to the wicket and started positive from the get-go. And well played to the man. His first century of this season as well. Congratulations to Justin, uh, Josh De Silva, leading from the front. It'll be interesting to see on the replay uh, how close Terence Hines was, was, was to being run out on that. He really chances on there. That's after this delivery. It was a good pick up and throw. Yeah, he was home. Yeah, he was home. A direct hit might have had him in a little bit of trouble. Throws alongside the stumps, but a little bit wide. But a fantastic innings by the captain of the Red Force team. He's shown his class here today at Sabina Park. But it extremely well. 100 off 128 deliveries. Yeah, and, uh, well, he's not the first centurion in round seven because Mikhail Louie, of course, at the top of the order, making a hundred there for the Leeward Island Hurricanes. And, of course, he's a leading run scorer in this year's Western East Regional yeah. Championship as well. Well deserved, well deserved indeed. Who beaten by that one? And then down the leg side to complete the 81st at 285 for the loss of six. And look at his figures there 15 fours and 1 six. Look at the replay here on this last delivery. Well, that was a very, very good delivery. I didn't think that was going on leg side at all, but it's probably <laughs> a lot, probably bounced a lot more than he expected. I think that spun across, I would say, about middle and leg. Maybe my glasses need cleaning. Let's have a closer look here. Peach outside leg and no, spun. I think it, 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 spun hit his, it, yeah, it hit his back foot, yeah. which was on middle and leg, but his height there. I think the appeal was a little bit too stifled from the Jamaicans. Flicks nicely. There's the silver. You're not going to farm the strike here. Yeah? You're going to give Terence Hines his chance to go all guns blazing. Two for 54 from the Jamaica captain for the day, Pete Salmon. Well, no need to farm the strike on Terence Hines. Can handle his what as well. He scored a 92 last year against the same opponent, the Scorpions. Beat someone two for 54 so far into his 21st over. And as I mentioned, the Scorpions this season, Andrew, haven't of the killing instinct. Getting early wickets was just not been able to pull through. That was a bit uppishly, but into that uh, mid on mid wicket region. It's this one nicely through the extra cover region. High it goes, and it's four for Tarantines. Easy stroke there. Yes, indeed. Over pitch delivered here from Pete someone and as 
easy as a Wednesday afternoon here at Sabina Park for Terrence Hines. Top shot by the all rounder. Well, it's getting late in the day, Penny, but I think the Jamaicans are starting to just look a little bit ragged and a little bit downbeat here. Don't seem as chirpy as they did before. Uh, They've been positive throughout the day. 22 run partnership in quick time as well. Neat this down the leg side, and that's a freebie again for Terrence Hines. Don't stray on his legs. He'll flick you away for four. This is poor from Captain Pete. Someone in this occasion delivery before he over pitch and then this final delivery pulled it down and easy pickings for Terence Hines he continues to score freely here at Sabina Park and the runs inches closer to that magical figure of 300 it's 294 for the loss of six Yeah, the Jamaicans did well at the beginning. They got that early wicket, and they were gifted a couple along the way, but uh, it's been a solid performance by Josh De Silva. Uh, good little knock by Navin Bidesi as well, and then, of course, scores from Amu Jangu and Kian Otley sort of laying the platform for De Silva to do what he's doing right now. As he has deep discussion with the short leg fielder. Probably discussing ways it has the best jerk chicken in Kingston for dinner. Not at all. I'll be discussing the curry goat as well. Mm. <laughs> well, I know you have fried chicken, man, so that's what you'd be looking for. Our good friend Dylan Sharma, he loves his burgers. That's a thick outside edge. That will run close to the third man boundary. No, it doesn't. The fielder comes back. And uh, Josh De Silva runs two. Probably open the face there, trying to guide it down. Didn't get it as nicely as he would like. And if you realize, Josh De Silva continues to have a healthy run rate as well. Yeah, his strike rate is very, very good for a four-day game. Uh, and that is good to see, of course. Been able to score easily at Sabina Park. But the uh, all in all, I think the, the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force have done well of nullifying the Jamaican spin threat. They've been heavily dependent on them. Chivo Royal hasn't bowled as well as he would have liked. 22 over 70 runs and just a solitary wicket. And that was Jason Mohamed LBW, which that in itself was a marginal decision. Flick through the mid wicket again and half stop by Dennis. Excellent work there from him. Hasn't had the best of days in the field on his debut, Dennis. Hasn't had the best of days in the field with the ball either. But like all military men, he will get up at fourth at 0400 hours, make his bed and get ready for the day once again. Probably go home and shine his cricket boots until he sees his face in them. Star of the day so far, in my eyes, is the silver. Been outstanding in the middle for the Red Force team, leading from the front as a captain. And as I mentioned earlier, the last game of the season, and he came out and did just what was required of him. And gets his fifth first class century at this level. Yeah, I think however you look at it, I mean, if you score 300 runs in a day, um, it's, it's, it's good going uh, in terms of Red Bull again, that's a lovely cut. But there's a field out there it's sweeping. So it's just a single for Hines. <coughs> 30 run partnership from 31 delivered. Came at a rapid pace, Andrew. That's what I'm telling you about. Oh, easily the Red Force is scoring at the moment. Yeah. 
30 partnership from 32 deliveries. The score is up to 299 for the loss of six at the completion of the 83rd. And if you look at the scores in the in the regional game around in round seven, I think Trinidad Tobago Red Force you might arguably have had uh, the best day other than Guyana against the CCC. Let's just give you a rundown of what's happened throughout the course of the day here. In terms of the other games around the region, Barbados Pride one fifty three all out, and the West Indies Academy one hundred and eleven for four. Leeward Islands 300, Windward Islands Volcanoes 6 for 1, and CCC uh, 200 all out, a guy and a half Eagles 114 for 1. So players ended in those other games for the day. And of course, in a few, play will be over here at Sabina Park for the day as well. Five thirty-four here in Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah, so I think both Guyana and uh, Trinidad Red Force have had the ideal first days. Based on the time, shaded for close of play. It was shaded for 5.48. So another 13 minutes before close on day one. Would see been dominated by the Red Force so far, in particular this man who scored his fifth first class entry. And the other aspect to think of, of course, uh, Penny, is I, I, I'm interested to see how Joshua Silva bats with the tail as Jamaica take more wickets in the, in the lower middle order. How, how long can he bat with them? Goes for a sweep this time. And he's good at batting with the tail as a 300 comes up for the Red Forest team. 300 for six. But we are at the 83rd. We are in the 84th over. I think that's actually the first time he's used the sweep, if, I, if I'm correct, against the spinners. Uh, we saw Kian Offley trying to use it quite a lot. Uh, got himself in a tangle once or twice. And Mujango was fairly effective at it. And if you remember... Back in 2002, when he scored his maiden test century, he was batting with Jaden Seals. Yeah, that's square. That's a full delivery. A loosener, a loose one from Salmon. Uh, and Terence Hines deals with that and dispatches that to the Kingston Cricket Club. A terrific shot there. Just showing some T20 skills there was Terence Hines and cracked that ball through the cover point region. For yet another boundary to his credit, 304 for loss of six at the completion of 84. Remember, when he made his main first class century, he was batting with Jaden Seals, and the two put together a 56 run partnership before he got his 100. Yeah, that's quite true. So he's very capable of batting with the tail as well. Yeah, batting with the tail from Trinidad and Tobago because, of course, Jaden Seal hails from Trinidad as well. <laughs> they are good friends too. Yeah, yes, of course they are. But I'm sure, I'm sure Josh is good friends with all his teammates. Yes, a good Very likable personal. Indeed. Yeah. Very respectful as well. So another 11 minutes before close of play on day one of this seventh round action from Sabina Park. With the Red Force dominating day one, yeah. Andrew, we could clearly see. And our good friend Jerome Foster is behind us, scribbling down a bunch of notes that he's going to ask Josh De Silva at the end of the day, because of course you know he has to get his interview as an observer. And of course, that man have a dictionary in his brain as well.
As you mentioned, that cut-off time is 5.48, and that's just about 10 minutes away. He's bold! bold. You see? Through. Yes, well, it well, is! Well. That's a top delivery from Javoy Royal. And he gets his reward. And a big wicket to him as well. But excellent knock from Justice Silva. Comes to an end. 106 from 138 delivery. And it took a wonderful delivery from Javoy Royal to dismiss this one. Let's look at the replay here. Top delivery. Yeah, inside straight edge. through the gap, straight through the gap there. Brought his bat down at an angle. Excellent innings by the captain there. But he will be disappointed there that he didn't see out the day, even though he acknowledges the applause for his 100. And a pleasant smile on his face. He should be happy with himself, but still be disappointed that he hasn't closed out the day. Yes, he should be. It was a spectacular delivery from Javoy Royal. You'd want to see unplayable delivery as a new batter is prepared. This should be. This could be a very, very interesting ten overs, uh, ten minutes. Penny, if they can uh, get another wicket or two, then the Scorpions will feel a little bit better about the. the the day. But Carry Peard can handle himself with the bat as well. Yeah, not Seeing too bad. In numerous occasions for the Red Force team getting useful contribution in the lower the and back in. Yeah, they bat, they bat pretty, pretty much down to number 11. Anderson Phillip, no slouch either. Terence Hines will probably enjoy being the leading bat out there, dictating terms to the others. The red force but all the way to 11. <laughs> well played by pair but almost sneaking through Javor Royal looks to the heavens. Two for 73 so far is Royal into his 24th over of the contest. There are two wicked. big wickets as well Jason Mohammed and uh, and Josh the Silver. Yeah it was two big wickets for him. So he makes his figures look a little bit better because he was, uh, I, I thought he was a little bit expensive, not as good as he would like. What would be even better for him if he gets another before the close of play on day one? Mm. And they're strengthening the, the feelers around the bat, which is good. A leg slip in place now, in addition to the short leg and, uh, and the conventional slip. Still a sweep in position, I would bring that player in. Almost through there. Royal knows it's going down leg side. Asking question late on the one. He's Travoy Royal. So have a look at the replay here. Mm, just spinning away past leg stump. Almost getting in a tangle there, Pierre, but he gets off the mark. Not the most convincing way, but a single nice nonetheless to him and to the Red Force. So to 305 for loss of seven. One delivery remaining in the 85th over by Royal. It's really been an interesting day's penny day's cricket penny. I think that I think what the Jamaica Scorpions can feel confident about is that they've fought throughout the day. Yes, they've had a bit of luck. Um, yes, there have been some uh, some poor batting shots from Red Force. And yes, the Silver had a had a wonderful inning. But they just about took wickets at, at the right time. End of the over, 305 for 7, 85 bold. But they just about took wickets at the right time, just before partnerships got too much away from them. So they can feel confident that they fought throughout the day, as opposed to just, as it was against the Harpy Eagles on the first day, they, they won the first session resoundingly, and then they lost the next two sessions resoundingly. But at least here, they've, they've, they've been in the game, They'll be disappointed that the Red Force have crossed 300. But with just a couple of wickets in the hutch, they can close this innings off very quickly if they, if, they, if they play their cards right. And so far, the Red Force has maintained a run rate of over three and a half in throughout this inning so far. 
that goes to show how easy they are scoring runs here at Sabina Park. But I think they've just played positive cricket. It hasn't, uh, they, they've, they've put away bad deliveries. Ooh. Once again, the, the Scorpions have been solid, if not spectacular. And Sopina Park is a classical batting wicket as well, Andrew. But if you, if you think about how Keon Otley went about his innings, I think it sort of set the tune in terms of what the Red Force, how the Red Force were playing. They, they were trying to dictate to him. Joshua Silva slowed it down, but he was still scoring. He didn't try to dictate terms, but he simply looked for scoring opportunities. Jangu tried to dictate terms. Bedesi was holding up and end with his captain until he tried to dictate terms and, and threw away his knock. Well, Hartley made 45 as well. Yeah. And Jangu made an half century. Good ball from Royal to get rid of... Uh, of the silver. Yeah, but it was a top delivery. Yeah, but yeah, but Royal hasn't bowled enough top deliveries for the day. That's the problem. And you're absolutely correct. Up and down for Javoy Royal. At the completion of the 86. 305 for the loss of seven. Yeah, maiden for the Jamaican skipper. And the Scorpions move slowly into position. Romain Morris looks like he's taking a walk in the park there with his significant other. <laughs> Surprised we're not seeing more of Javon Buchanan, Penny. Well, of course, we may not, because this should be the final over of the day. It is alleged. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe to a quick royal bowl, maybe we, we can get in another. Yeah, but they did well, the Scorpions. If you're looking for 90 overs in a day, and you're going up to 87, that's not bad. Remember, we lost over half an hour due to a dark Sabina Park, and then we get some showers as well. Terence Hines looks like he's setting up shop for the night. Going to play that one, Hines. They decided against it. At the last second. Thing is a wise idea as well. Don't want to lose a wicket just before close. Javoy Royal pushing through these deliveries. I've enjoyed today's cricket, though, Penny. It's uh it's gone by, the day, the day's gone by quite quickly because the cricket has been really, really good. But it, it sort of just goes to show that, that, that more games need to happen in the, in the, in the regional for the championships in terms of... And of course, we as Jamaican happy that the regional cricket has been playing out here as well. Yeah. And we are we're able to experience a beautiful Chedwin Park. And of course, the Might wonderful... Might take a drive with Dylan Sharma, our producer, to see it this, half, this weekend. As, uh, we wax lyrical at Chedwin Park. And of course, Kensington Cricket Club as well. Well, Kensington Cricket Club is lovely, but I have fond <laughs> memories of uh, Chedwin, Park. Chedwin Park. It was awesome there at Chedwin Park. Yeah. I think it's just because it was cool and pleasant conditions. And that's where I made my debut in first class commentary as well. <laughs> <laughs> that completes over number 87 or 306 for the loss of seven. And the water boy is coming out for Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. So they're trying to soak up a minute or two. Let's look at the scorecard for the Red Force team. And he, I guess you were, you, were, you were wrong on this occasion, Penny, because you said that would be the last over of the day. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. That was the exact words I used. Well, I, I think, <laughs> I, I thought it was very strange. I mean, all the credit and uh, respect you do to Mr. Hales, 
that 5.48 was a strange cutoff time. Why, why 5.48? So maybe the umpires have said, hey, let's go to 5.50. <laughs> we might have one more but, over in. And if you see on the field of play now, it's very dark, Andrew. So this definitely will be the final one, though. Or maybe because the spinners are operating, they're thinking, well, we can't get the overs in, the full complement of 90. Well, of course, three re remaining before the 90. Let's see what elegant time-wasting tactics are employed by the Red Force now. Ooh, getting, getting a tangle there, but that probably pitched outside the line of like some Pete Salmon wasn't interested. Yes, a stifled appeal as well from the Scorpions. Yeah, there we go. Yes, let's have a conversation. Yes, I think I should balance my checkbook tonight. Ensure this is the final one. That's the experience of the battles in the middle as well. Nice push by Heinz. And oh, that's a lovely diving half stop there, but the run is not stopped. Andre Dennis showing off his football skills. That would have been a very clean slide tackle. <laughs> a very, very good touch. Maybe a heavy touch too, but a good stop. Like a true pass in football. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't want him as my central defender. Not at all. I wouldn't want him as my goalkeeper either. Not yeah. using his hands. Carry pair batting with the wide brim. They're not so wide brims anymore. It's not as, uh, as wide as a famous Richie Richardson one. It's more of a fisherman's hat. I think, Pete, someone should be getting the ball. Let the batters play. That's the area you should be targeting at the completion of the 88. If you're 7, for the loss of 7. And play will continue. They haven't, uh, the umpires aren't striding off as yet. Seems like we're going to have a full complement of 90 overs for the day. Yeah, certainly looks like that, Penny. Two overs remaining in the day's play. And the Scorpions must be credited as well. All of a sudden, Kyrie Pitt decides <laughs> he decides he needs a helmet. Penny, elegant <laughs> tactical time wasting. <laughs> I think umpire. I'm sure by the next over you might decide. Ah, I may I might go capless this time. <laughs> what would make him disappointed if he's out this afternoon? <laughs> you never know. He might ask Pete Salmon, "Let me borrow your Jamaica cap." <laughs> but of course, Joe Boy Royal will want to have. Another wicket to his tally this evening as well. Yeah. But sensible cricket from the two late order batters for the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. They're not chancing anything. No need to at this stage of the game. Suspect Jamaica Scorpions will take the new ball first thing in the morning. The day meanders to a close here, Penny. It's been an excellent day of cricket. Really, really competitive. A long day as well. Entertaining day as well. Witness a magnificent century from the Red Force captain, Josh the Silver. That one is cut nicely. The Silver. Or oh, not, my apologies, Hines will give uh, Carry Pear one delivery to face. And so far, Terence Hines shown his all around capabilities as well. I'm surprised in terms of time wasting tactics, they haven't recalled for their mark or their guard. 
when we take off the bagel, hammer it into the ground, I could save a couple precious milliseconds. <laughs> Dancing up the pitch is Pierre, but I don't think he was ever going for the drive. And he calls for another change of hat again at the end of the over. 308 for seven. Gary Pierre, he's playing chess while we're all playing Ludo. Indeed, he does get a change of hat. That's back to the floppy for him. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier. Call it right. Yeah. <laughs> Final over coming up in the day's play. And what an entertaining day we have so far, Andrew. Good bowling, good batting, and some sloppy feeling as well. It's. Yeah, the ground feeling hasn't been what uh, the Jamaica Scorpions would like to be, but their catching has been a little bit better. No drop catches, as Fozzie would proclaim to the world. I think he's going on Twitter now. Maybe going for an interview with the man who scored a century. Yeah, Josh De Silva. Indeed. A red for skipper. Leading from the front. Down the leg side, doesn't get this one away. Normally he's quite good at Flicking that down the leg side, there's Taro Hines. And the ball continues to find Andre Dennis as well. A miserable day in the field for him. But who would you give the day to Penny? Because it's been really hard to call. I mean, if you look at just scoreboard pressure, you'd see the Red Force in front by virtue of 300 on the board. But to be honest, it's even steam for me. It's like playing a football game and it's nil all. This is a classic batting wicket at Sabina Park. Yeah, but I think I think Red Force just have their nose in front ever so slightly. So maybe a, a 55 to 45 situation if you want to put a number on it. Well, we both have different ideas. <laughs> but it's very close. <laughs> it is indeed. And bodes well in terms of the cricket. If, uh, if in the Scorpions' response, they can put up a good innings as well. And we could see some very good cricket. It's just a good day of cricket, Andrew. That ball there. As Heinz was dancing around in his crease before the delivery, Salmon decides to pull out of it. It's the last delivery of the day. And the disappointment for me was... I was enjoying the youngster bat. And then a far shot and he gave his wicket away in the 30s. Solid defensive stroke. Terence Hines puts his bat underneath his arm and he strides off with the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force ending the first day of play here at 308 for 7. They were asked to bat by the Jamaica Scorpions after standing captain Pete Salmon won the toss. Scores of 45 from Otley. 51 from Amir Jangu, but the story of the day is 100 from that man, Joshua De Silva, 101, leading the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force to 308 for 7 at the closer play in Sabina Park here. Jamaica Scorpions, they're still in this game. Final thoughts from Marlon Pinnock before he signs off on the first day here. It was a balanced day of cricket between these two teams playing at Sabina Park, but adds off to the Red Force captain and getting his fifth regional first class century and to the scorpions bowlers who have put in the work to wicket for captain pete someone one for shields one for the david the, the david and angie mccarthy one for buchanan and all in all it was a wonderful day of cricket on the first day so we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m for the second day speed. Bye-bye.